on that? Am I wrong? No, it's this one. 88, field 88, and then we go field 88 on that. So we go 88 further. Um, and let's see. Let's get our let's get our DRFs right. So we know that this this function. Uh, where are my XRFs at? Here we go. Uh, we know that this function is referenced in this VF table. Um, and thus, we should be able to conclude that uh, anything that references that VF table uh, is a this pointer for this thing. So what we can do is, uh, can I rename that type? Let's go retype that. I'm putting this up here. Um, so a struct one. And then what we can maybe do, we know that there's a field on that. That refs it. Wait. R4. We add 88. Then we go into here. We add, we move 88. We deref 88 into that. That's getting a function pointer, is it not? Um... All right, we're gonna find an XREF. Here we go. This is the VF table. We searched through memory for that VF table. We then found many occurrences. There are many occurrences of this VF table all over the place, right? Uh, and these things are, are likely relatively similar. Let's find the meatiest one. Let's find one that has like the most stuff going on. This one looks good. So this has a pointer. Uh, to that table, right? This is the table that we're interested in. So this is a VF table to that thing. So let's see. Um, or that's a pointer to the VF table. So this is a structure. So let's say that this is a uh, a struct one. Couldn't create data. Oh yeah, and then that repeats. So we'll go actually to. This is the lowest address occurrence of it. Um, a struct under one. Okay, so we have an a struct one. How do I expand this? Okay, here are the fields. So field 88, sweet. So that passes a reference to field 88, which then gets dereft plus 88. Ah, uh, shit, sorry. Uh, field 88. Um, we're going to mark 88. Uh, we're going to retype that field. Uh, that's going to be a void pointer, 88. Okay. And here we go. So that should be retyp retyped as a pointer. And then that is indeed a pointer. So let's see what the indirection is here. Uh, it passes a reference to field 88. It then takes that and it treats that as a new structure, but it's a reference to that field. So it treats that. That's actually going to uh, offset 88 is going to be a V table. And then it's going to deref 88 into that, right? This. So this is a V table. So I think we add an extra 88 because this is just going to be a V table, right? Yeah, it's a V table. It's definitely not a structure. So we want to take this address plus 88. And then this is. Um, that actually derefs at 88, though. Load reg. Which is 78. Right? It's treating that 78. 
Um, Heapy is set up. So it sets up Heapy from Ivar 1 and... Um, yeah, I mean, there's a non-zero chance. Branch and link to that. I mean, that's... Um... Hmm. Right? We have Pram 1. This adds 88 to that. And then... We have 88. We DRF R1. So we DRF 88 on R1. Well, we copy R0 and R1. It's weird. Co yeah, I'm pretty sure it's 88 plus 88 hex, right? Ref that field, and then here we deref 88 into that. Um, that cast it as an A struct too. So what we can do is we can go back to this, uh, or we can actually retype field 88, and we can say this is an A struct under two star. So that will retype that field. A struct under two star. Um, oh. Yeah, that's an A struct two pointer. Eighty-eight. Oh, that's not that's not an a struct two. This field is not an a struct two pointer. This is an a struct two. There we go. That's what I wanted. Okay, sweet. So I was right. Um, okay, so in here we then have an a struct two, and then we look at a struct two. Uh, we expand that. I guess toggle space. Nice. And then this will have an eighty-eight field, and it is a 78 hex, right? And so this will technically fetch that field, because it will actually access that field. That is the net effect there. It'll get field 88 out of there. And then it will potentially set that as heapy. And maybe that's just not what's actually happening. Hmm. What else can we do here, dude? Because that's field 190, and field 190.heapy is set from Ivar1. Um, so let's try and find other uh, structures, I guess. So we can say that this, uh, we'll just say that this is uh, a struct one. Okay, and then we'll see if this one differs at all. That's a 78 as well. Um, and all of these occurrences of this structure, a struct one. And there's a 78 as well. And then this is the last one, I think. Oh, there's some, mm, there's a 304. Well, that is that, and then they repeat. Okay, so, hmm. There's a 78 as well. 
Pram one field one ninety. Ivar one. Store R five. And this is storing that R five. Hmm. That's code. This is also code. And their excess to this is a call, branch and link. Yeah, I don't think that's a pointer. Oh my god, like... What's MPL Memory Manager? What? One ninety plus four. That's heapy. MPL Memory Manager. Pram um So this is the same sort of thing, right? This this is a we we can type this. We know that this is an a struct two pointer. Sorry, is this a struct three? Uh, what has heapy on it? Did we rename the thing that had heapy? Which one has heapy? Oh, just a struct. That makes sense. Um, so we know that this is an a struct, and that's heapy, right? That makes sense. And then we see things that are referencing fucking MPL memory manager. Uh, that's an ASCII string right here, so we can clear that. Um, it's a string itself right here. String. Um, pram one minus one, pram one as a pointer minus one times five.
Let's commit those. Field 190. Uh, once again, this is uh this is an A-struct pointer. And there's Heapy. This is like free heap or release heap or something. Um If it's not equal to zero, if it's equal to zero, then do this, which is probably just registers that thing. Plus 84. That's getting a, okay, so that's getting a reference. So this is allocating, this is allocating a big ass thing and stuffing it in. Um, this is, uh, let's make a, let's make an auto structure here. Uh, so this is like, this is the big 32 meg alloc pointer, right? So this has a big 32 meg alloc pointer there. Uh, and then here we can say that, uh, I guess, well, now we have conflicting types, don't we? Oh, sorry, that this is an A-struct uh, one. All right. Or is this an A-struct 2? I think this is A-struct 2. Um, so if we were to go back to one of these, this has an A-struct 1, and then we have an A-struct 2 inside of here, and field 84. So we want to go to field 84 in the A-struct. So let's go to 84, and that's 0. So maybe this hasn't been allocated, right? Maybe this code never executed. Maybe this never happened. Um, but this field, that's basically the, the pointer to... That is what receives this large allocation pointer. Okay, so fuck it. Let's keep looking at other stuff then. Uh, deep allocation stuff. Now that we're getting better at this, uh, we see that this is an A stack, 32. An A stack 32, that is a, oh, that's actually a heapy. Is, is that not? This is setting an A struct uh, pointer. That's setting a heapy, this is heap. Um, let's commit those. Which means that by proxy, we know that, uh, oops, go forwards. Uh, we know that a stack 32, um, yep, we know that that's an a struct, and that's filling it in with param2, so we can try to derive where that might get set, param2 coming from here, we're gonna keep bubbling up, and we're hopefully gonna run into, uh, where was this xref? Here. It's called a 494. Um, I hate when sometimes this gets desynced. Because I'm fucking lost now. Uh, this. Where is this code? Why, why won't this highlight? Why won't this highlight? Um, 494, here we go. Here's the call of 494, uh, the second argument, right? It was the second argument that is being passed as the second argument, and that's being set as heapy. Okay, so we know that the second argument here, this uvar4, here we can see clearly it's coming from this. This is just going to get it at 2c on an ivar1. So let's uh, auto-struct this. Uh, commit those, and then we can say um, that's literally just getting it. So we know that that is this is a, a a heap. So we know that that is a heap thingy, heapy. Um, and that's coming off of a pa var one. Uh, did we commit that type? I think we did. So let's see, pa var one. Looks like we got an A-struct four pointer. Cool, where are we getting PA var one from? Um, 
Actually, we have an earlier Alex success, but this is doing the same thing. This is getting the A heap, assigning it and passing it to here. So PA var one, we've got a very short path here. If that is not equal to zero, um, which is this on a param two. Okay, so we can take a look at this. Let's, uh, let's, I think we auto struck that. Prim two, PA var one. Um, so this is some field that has an A struct for, so let's auto create a structure there. Um, this uh, has A struct for, okay. Um, and then we can type this as an A struct uh, four pointer. And then we'll commit that, and then hopefully this makes sense. Cool, so that's getting an A struct four pointer from this A struct four, which is an A struct four pointer in that data structure. And then we can look at a param two, and param two is an A struct five, and let's see where we have refs. This is on a param one plus 30, if I'm not mistaken. No, this is a uh, second argument to this. So this is on a param one, one C, create that, uh, commit this, and this is like, eventually gets to heapy, param one, and param one is at this pointer, and we're probably at the top here, not quite at the top. That's an A struct six pointer pointer, uh, which means we can, let's, make this a function. Okay, now that that is a function, we can go back to this uh, and we can auto create a structure here. And field 04, the type show that, okay, that's correct. Field 04, so that bubbles into the heap. And then here we have an address. And then this is a VF table Okay, let's see if anything is referencing that address. So we're gonna do a search through memory for this. I'm guessing the start of the VF table is maybe this up here, but there also could be gaps in the VF table. So th this might be the start of the VF table. It's really hard to say. Um, yeah, there's no references to that, but there are references to this. And the reference to that is here. Okay. Search for something that uses this VF table. I gotta cancel that search, yes. Okay, uh, search for this. All right, um, so there is a reference to that here. Is that it though? It's a big VF table, yeah, I mean it's hard to say. Well, honestly, given that's just like a do nothing, yeah, so it's hard to say, right? this ref here. We could also think that maybe this is a VF table. Okay, here's an object that has that as a VF table here. Um, which means that we could say that this is an A struct seven. Um, actually, it's an A struct seven. <sighs> Fuck, dude. Mm. Um, I think we might be off by one reference. That's a pointer. I'm assuming that that's going to have a this pointer. Honestly, I think that might be correct. 
That is a field four. Yeah, let's let's look at this. There's only one occurrence of this structure, um, and it's here. So let's uh, let's say this is an a struct seven. Okay, expand this, and then we have a field four. And a field four, uh, we know that a field four is. Um, We know that a field four is a, um, okay, so let's go down the stack here. I don't even know where I came from, to be honest, anymore. So field four is a pointer. Hmm. So this is that VF table. Well, this is hypothetically a VF table. This... Four four ninety ref. Did we see a uh, DCB seventy four? We actually have one here. God damn, dude. Dream setup for a local network of machine. Yeah, that's fucking fantastic, dude. Oh, son of a bitch, dude. <clears throat> Dismiss, cancel, yes. So there's no, there are references to this, but. What an absolute fucking mess, dude. I hate C++ so fucking much, dude. Uh, there are references to this. And you just, you don't know the level of indirection for these VF tables. So you don't know, like, at what point the actual object happens. It's so fucking hard, dude. Trying to find the heap in memory? Yes. Well, we're not actually trying to find the heap. We're probably trying to find this, like, message passing structure. Um... Which is probably, like, the the global this pointer for, like, the... It's probably, like, fucking kernel. It's probably, like, the kernel uh, data structure. Because there's, there's just so many VF tables here. Is the base address of the VF table reference somewhere? That's what we've been doing. Um... We also don't know the base address of the VF table, right? We it's it's impossible to know the base address of the VF table. But we knew we do know that the VF table that we're interested in is referenced here. But we also don't know if this is actually uh the correct level of indirection. Cuz then that's just another VF table. Um That makes sense for a constructor. So it's probably constructor Constructor here, and then destructor here, right? And then we have the actual shit that's going on. Probably a new, you know, other shit, accessors, getters. It's just so much indirection, dude. Mmm... Oh, e. This isn't code. F -f -m. Some interesting numbers in here. Okay, this maybe is squeezed into code. Uh, 
Fucking thumb, dude. I mean, that's mem copy. Yeah, so this is code. This is a function. It's, it's a not followed by a branch to here. Well, that's actually really strange. <sighs> okay. Um, so let's take a look at for this. This might not find an eight. This is probably on a zero. Let's take a let's take a look for a zero. There you go. So this is a reference to the thing that has the VF table, but Yeah. No references to that. Are there references to this though? That's more aligned, so that would make more sense, in my opinion, for a ref to this. Now, it might be a ref to the 18 variant, too. So, we kind of have to search for both variants. DBC, this is definitely allocated in heap space. Um, let's see if there's an 18 ref. Nothing. Um... Hmm. Pram one. Ref this. We actually know that there's no refs to that. We or we know that there's a zero ref to this. So we know that there's a hit for this and we found it, right? So this um so this function is likely kind of setting twenty seven ten. Whoa. Whoa! Oh, that's storing that data. Load that. 2710 Okay Uh, 
Um. Oh, that's getting cons propped, but that's not actually what's happening. Um. So. Pointer dat that. Hmm. Hmm. God, that's so fucking annoying, dude. C++ is so fucking awful, dude. Literally the worst fucking... Ugh. Worst language ever fucking made, dude. Absolute garbage language. Oh, man, dude. So fucking stupid. Like... It's crazy to me, like, how inefficient C++ code gen is for the most part. Because it promotes so much inheritance in virtual objects. Hmm. You are two, that's on a pram five. Pram two. Pvar one. Yeah, this is clearly operating on heap. That gets the heap. This axis is the thing on the heap. God damn, dude. In before nothing is used, the job MDT, and like literally none of this is initialized. And that's why you can't find it anywhere in memory. <laughs> oh, that's probably like what actually has happened. Size of alloc remain. This actually performs the allocation here. And then we just don't know what the fuck the heap is. Prime one plus eight, prime one plus four. That's allocating. Like this heap should be very popular. So, theoretically, theoretically, it looks like this is a, another wrapper on the heap, right? So we're like three heaps deep. Um, actually, probably like two heaps deep. And this is setting pram2, which is what we care about, right? Pram2 is heapy. Uh, right, because this sets a stack 32, that sets heapy on a stack 32, this goes in here, and then this actually uses heapy on that. So in theory, in theory, there, like, the size, there should be a lot of allocations, so this is going to add to the size, isn't it? Alex size, okay, that's not... I would expect to find, like this is setting heapy. That's what we want. Param one plus four and param one plus eight is the, okay, param one plus C. Let's, uh, let's auto struct that. 
so this is uh this is like a heap thing. And this is the alex size. This is the heat pointer. Uh, C. I don't know what that is. Oh, that's the um. Is that the padded size? Uh, one, two, three, four, five. It's the fifth field. One, two, three, four, five. Pram five. Sorry. I gotta count these again. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four. It's the fourth. Pram four. Pram four. Is that the actual size allocated? Pram four. Dref pram four. What's that? No, that's gotta be a pointer. Output alloc. Whoa, I I I typoed those. This is a uh, alloc size. Right? I'll put Alec. Yeah. Heap Alec size output. Output pointer. Um, this is a void star star. Alex size, is that? God, I, f I scuffed these pretty bad, dude. Oops, that is not what I wanted. Son of a bitch. Um. Pram plus field. Set the alloc size, set the heat pointer. This is getting the actual allocation. That's weird. That's really weird. Field C. It's like the actual allocation pointer. Field 10. Alex size. If it's equal to zero, blah, blah, blah. Field 10. Is that the second, third argument? We have no idea what that is, do we? Third argument is second argument. Second argument, we thought it was Alex size, it's, it's not. I mean, we didn't think it was, we typoed that it was Alex size. This is some, maybe like a flink, blink? Because it's not passed to Alec, right? They don't actually pass in that. So this is IDK. IEK, this is Alex size, this is output Alec, this is a void star star, okay. Same shit in here, IDK, Alex size, output Alec, uh, IDK, Alex size, output Alec, commit. Alex size, that's the output. We don't know what that is. We don't know what this is. This is like maybe a next. And why are there two different things? 
calls Deep Alex. So this wraps it even more. So this is like the heap type. If it's 18, field 18 is a one. Um, pram one, field 18. All right. Field 19, field 18. Um, let's uh, edit this in the structure editor. Field 18 and 19 are characters. We've got a heap pointer, an alloc size, and an allocation pointer. So this is like an allocation object or something. So I'm basically trying to figure out if I'm going to be able to find this object. Uh, since we know there's some, there's some specific shapes to this, so I'm kind of curious if we can, we know, we know that there's a heat pointer in here. Uh, so I could probably write a query that would look for a pointer-like value preceded by a size, so like something probably less than 64k, followed by two character values that may be one or maybe zero. Like that is kind of uh, what I'm thinking about doing. Where basically we go and make the assumption that there's probably a lot of heaps. Well, we know that there's that large heap. Let's go find, let's go find the big heap quick. I think uh, it's above us, maybe by one. Um. Hmm. Let's find xrefs to this. Oh, here's a. Is that it? Is that it? Is that done? Is that right there? Ah! Uh, whoa! 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 Ho hold the phone! Hold the phone! Hold the phone! Pram two. Local 18. Ah, son of a bitch. No, nope, never mind. Local 20, though. Local 20, which is prem 1, which is seemingly never used, uh, is actually this. So. Ref. So this is a, this is the thing. So this will have, like, a VF table. to some shit. Uh, so that's one object. Uh, and so we know that that is like get global something. Um, I'd love to see it assign local 18 to that fucking thing. So then we could go and find it. But yeah, this... Hmm... Damn, dude. Okay, that prim one. Prim two. Come on, dude. Come on. Local 20 is this. Oh! I think we did it, chat. I think we did it, chat. Okay, uh, more Alex shit. Pram 2. Pram 2 is heapy, correct? Yes. So heapy is pram 2. Pram 2, nothing happens from that. So this is uh, pram 2. Is heapy? Uh, pram2 is heapy, so uh, let's find an xref to pram2 is heapy. There's only one xref. Local 20, and local 20 is uh, this. 
that plus four, if it's not equal to zero, this has to return a value, right? Compare R0. Branch and link, store R0. Compare R0, load R0. This has a return value. Uh, uh, void star. Okay. Instruct. Sorry. Dots. If heapy is not equal to zero, then it does this shit on it. That's an A heap on it. That's an offset four. Offset four. So if if offset four of this thing is not equal to zero, okay. So uh, basically this one nine f nine five nine twenty eight dc. So this thing here, here's offset four. It's equal to zero. Son of a bitch, dude. Uh, yeah, that's all set for zero. Ref that. Load reg. We do have this. It causes that to be actually that value. Fuck, dude. I mean, maybe this, I feel like this, I feel like this is the, like, fundamental. Wait. Wait. Local 20. I think, I think, I think the heap can be null. I think we can pass in null. And it will use like the system heap. I think we can call this function, we can pass in a null. If it's not equal to zero, and that. Let's find that else case. Oh, hmm, no, that's definitely not going to work. Is this, are these the heaps? Plus param one. Is it an index? Is it a heap selector? If it's not equal to zero and it's, oh, well, it clearly it needs to be not equal to zero and greater. Uh, it has to be in this range. This is like 
So. Oh, wait. God, well, that's fucking obvious. Um, so that's like a heap index. Prem one is just obviously zero is bad. These this feels like buckets. This feels like a heap bucket. But it's confusing to me how there would be buckets like like seven seven B probably like powers of two buckets. I think these are heaps. God damn it, I think this is a... Is this a size? Are these allocations? Two hundred, two thousand, four thousand. Maybe the top bits are flags. 100. Okay, I don't think that's an address, but that could be a size. FE. This is flag status. Is there any ordering here? I think this is a heap right here. I think this is a fucking heap. I think this is a, a massive fucking heap. And I think the heap starts here. Here here's my here's my hypothesis. Let's do a stream term. Alright, here's my hypothesis. If I take this address, one nine seven four two three twenty, and I add three six zero zero one two three it's probably going to be close to a 1CD42. 1CD42320. Yes, it is. Right? So this plus this is exactly equal to this. And then if we do that again, if we add 2,000, we'll get the probably the next one. Uh, not exactly, but... Let's see, did we type that right? 2320 plus this, and we got 1CD42320. Uh, and then, oh, I want to add 200, and we got 1CD42520. Yes, okay. Um, so there's stuff there. Reference to this.
So I think these are different heaps, maybe. And I would imagine this is like start and end of the heap. Um, this is probably the free list. Here's my guess. Uh, this is probably like maybe the start of the heap. This is like the current heap pointer. This is probably the size of the heap. This is probably some flags. This is probably a, a free list pointer. Um, and who knows what the fuck this is. This could potentially be the free list as well. Oh, mm, okay. Um, well, that's interesting. Is this a free list? That 3-6 came back again. Which is very interesting. This is the one right afterwards. Oh, these are the names of the these are the names of the heaps. Sick. Okay. So we have the MPL memory manager. Um probably the size of the heap, size of the heap, MPL debug, uh NVM EP main, non-volatile memory, a bunch of these things. So we can actually see what these heaps are called. Message timer, tr clock controller, um, MPL. So probably memory pool, memory manager is what that is. So that, that's my guess. This is probably memory pool, memory manager. Um, one is probably like a flag of whether it's in use or not or something. Um, I think if we pass... If we pass a one, I think we get an allocation, and I think the allocation, the the return value that we get from the allocation is likely going to be this. It's going to be like a 19. It's something probably in this range. How big is this? Hex. Uh, sorry, uh, I don't want hex. I want decimal. 56 megs. 56 megs? 56 megs is probably large enough for us to snapshot all of memory. I think we can make that work. Um, given this shit is mainly zeroed out, I think this memory is not in use. <sighs> this is the function we want to call, it's thumb. And we want to call this. This is the heap ID. The size that we want to allocate. Now that does a softer interrupt. That gets this. It's going to pass plus four into here. That's fine. Because I think at zero is probably the heap information. Prem2 is the size. Yeah, this is the size. Let's say this is the heap ID. Uh, heap ID. This is the output uh, pointer and like flags maybe? Okay, and this is like do Alex shit. Yeah, I think this is the core, man. And I think I was thrown off by these software interrupts. I thought this was gonna do like a messaging thing and I don't think it's going to. Um, I think this is an allocator itself. So this is the heap pointer. That gets a heap pointer, it adds four to it. And if we add four to a heap pointer, right? So if we go to, uh, one nineteen seventy three C fourteen, right? So these are heat pointers, right? So we deref that, we get a heat pointer. So now we're looking at this. This is what we're looking at. So this is what's in heat pointer when we're looking through here. And then we add four. So now this uh, is looking at this, right? And then we do plus eight. Pram one. 
it is going to deref it and it's gonna add this shit. Oh, that eight bytes aligns it up. So that is doing an eight byte up alignment. It's it, it, it's a hundred percent. This is this is the fucking core allocator, and that's just a heap ID. Um, I think we did it. Wow, we like really went kind of the wrong way around there, but that's reversing for you. So plus eight. So there's more metadata here. Here's the metadata, size of the allocation, plus eight. And then this is a reference to, I guess, I don't know what this is referencing. But it's referencing that. And then output pointer is pi var uh, one plus two. Um, and that makes sense, it's an int. That's adding uh, the plus two. So this is definitely doing a heap allocation, 100%. Um, and then flags maybe, if it's equal to zero, uh, return that, okay. If it's negative one, set some shit. Param one, plus this. Okay, I haven't, oh, hopefully zero is fine. It looks like it just returns out. Wait, if it's not equal to null, then it just returns here. And then flags aren't even used. Ah, I think flags, maybe if it's zero, it's like error on failure. And like this maybe is like pull or like retry or something. So it looks like flags aren't used when we come through here. If we just if we just bang through here, if that's equal to zero, uh, this is probably like if heap is initialized, then check the heap ID. So we could actually probably even go into here. This takes a heap pointer. Um, let's uh, let's make a structure out of that. Param one. This is this field, right? So we can apply. Uh, we can apply a type here, which I think is T. Uh, we can say this is an a struct nine. Clear. Uh, we're gonna apply a struct nine here. Okay, so this is an a struct nine. We're gonna expand that. Oh, that didn't set everything up. A struct nine double D breath. Var six is an a struct nine plus a var one. If it's not equal to zero, pram one, a var five. Hmm. Heat pointer plus four. This has to be able to get the size, and I'm just really curious how that works. Pram two. So this is like um pram one. Field zero. If a var one is not equal to zero, so if the size of the allocation is not equal to zero. Um, then we do this, right? So this is, uh, this is alloc size, and this is the heap pointer, and then this is, uh, rounded up size. So this eight bytes align up, um, a var one looks like... Oh, that returns zero. Uh, interesting, because that is zero if it if this is non-zero. Okay, that's a really weird optimization, but that makes sense. Um, so I think this is probably like heap start or like cur heap pointer is my guess right now, uh, which would be this field. We're gonna type that, and we're gonna say that this is a uh, a void star. Then uh, we're gonna say that this is a void star. Okay, it's getting better. Um, a var two. Unless this is a linked list. 
But I don't think it is. Maybe it is. Um. Do. PVAR1. Um, if that is null, return null. Otherwise, That's a cur heap pointer on that. So that is a linked list. And it's zero. Oh, it's a linked list. I think I know what it is now. I think I know what it is now. Um, here's, here's what it is. It's a linked list. Um, so you're going to here. This, uh, this is a linked list with next and the size on this chunk remaining. And there's probably some more metadata and shit on there. Now, we don't necessarily need to figure out how this heap works, to be honest. Um, but that's my guess. So then this is like, uh, this probably has like the original size of the heap and flags and original base of the heap, uh, original size of the heap, and then this actually has the uh basically a next pointer and that's why this is uh recursing into that so current heap pointer so we can just say this is maybe like a next pointer and then uh, we're going to change the typing on this edit data type we're going to add a field i think to this we're going to add a uh you can't really see this uh, we're going to cycle this we're gonna say that we have a, I don't know, maybe this is a bytes remain. Save that, see if that took effect. Here we go. Um, or like bytes on this chunk or something like that. And there's probably other flags here. So basically, um, we get the next pointer. Rounded up size, if that's not equal to zero. Just set rounded up size to, um, uh, let's just turn it to an int for now. Aver2, we get that next pointer. So what that has done, we're just, we're going through it now, effectively. Uh, too big, uh, okay, clear that. Clear that, uh, a struct nine. Okay, so we have We basically, we get this next pointer, which we get here. That is the first thing we do. So we, we get that first next pointer. These are actually probably slightly different structures. Uh, we shouldn't define this as recursive because I think these will have different types. Um, then, we, so we deref that. So the value in avar2 is pointing to this. That That is where it is currently pointing. Then, um... If avar2, so if this is if this is null, then we get the fuck out. And it's not null. It is what this is right now. Um, it then gets the next pointer in avar2. It sets this heat pointer. And then while the bytes remain is less than the rounded up size. So this is going to kind of walk through to look for those things. And then it gets, it then computes the new bytes remaining. And let me guess, it's going to reassign that probably. Uh, take the bytes remaining, subtract off the rounded off size. If it's equal to zero, then the next pointer 
is equal to the next pointer. So it basically flattens the linked list. So it removes the entry from the linked list. So this is a linked list of chunks and the sizes. So th this is basically a list of, yeah. Yeah, that's what it is. It's a linked list of the, this area, okay. And then that we get the next pointer a ref to the next pointer plus the rounded up size. We update, we basically update the next pointer. We set, this is going to be the, the new bytes remain. And with the new bytes remain, that gets set here in uh, PPV var three. And this is actually an a struct uh, nine pointer. And there we go. Okay, and then this is the, um, uh, next linked thing or something like that. Next linked thing. So basically, if the bytes remains equal to zero, then we just fucking skip to the next linked thing. We actually kind of go back in our place. Otherwise, um, yeah, 100%. That's what it's doing. And then PPVAR1, uh, this will return the actual... Um, so that's next linked thing. Hmm. Um. You want to resub, but property tax in your new house is stupid. That's fine. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Next link thing is that. So it's this. So it's going to return this. Right? Basically, I'm trying to figure out if this is going to return metadata or not. I, I think they use an in-band free list. So next link thing, that is this. That is what this is actually going to return. Um, or sorry, this is what it's going to return. So this is the return return uh, pointer. So the return pointer starts out as that. If it's equal to zero, then return none. Otherwise, we get the next link thing. We keep that return pointer. We set the heap pointer, uh, which is basically just for our loop tracking. Um, while we basically search until we have something that can satisfy the allocation. Once we have found something, we subtract off the difference. If it's equal to zero, then the previous is linked up to the next thing. So we remove it and we just leave ourselves in there. Otherwise, uh, and then we return that value. So basically, if we were to do an allocation of 3.6 uh, million hex, it would remove this entry and we would get this address as the actual allocation address. So if we were to allocate exactly that amount, we would just get this address and we would have control of this whole thing. Um, and then, it, um, if you don't use everything, then it will get the it will get the next address. So this is um, this is a pointer after our allocation. So it will compute the pointer after our allocation. It will then go to the previous next pointer and point it to there. So basically, let's say we allocate it right now. Let's say we allocated eight bytes. It would then return these eight bytes as the allocation to us. And then it would set this as the next next pointer. And then it would update this bytes remain with the new bytes remain. Perfect. It's literally just consuming this uh, linearly. Uh, and then the linked list just allows you to have things kind of on that list. Okay, we understand exactly how uh, the allocator works now. Okay, sweet. Honestly, it wasn't too difficult to figure out. We had some stumblings there, but whatever. Okay, so this is actually like underlying core um, linked list 
uh, allocate. All right. And then that is done with this heap pointer. So this just allows you to allocate using a heap ID, but if we just specified directly a pointer, um, it would just fucking, you know, go with it. And then that adds eight because this has metadata probably for free lists. So we might actually just want to directly call the underlying core allocator and pass in, uh, we might just want to pass in directly um, yeah, I think we just want to call this. And then we just pass that heap pointer. In this case, uh, this is the heap that we actually care about. Um, this one's not actually the bytes remain. But yeah. Okay. Chat! I think we did it. I think we did it. So we have an allocator, we pass it a heap pointer, and we pass it a size. And then it will give us an allocation of exactly that size. Well, technically, it will align it up to the nearest 8-byte boundary, um, which will guarantee that this is always 8-byte aligned. Um, technically, I think this goes out of bounds at the end, when you get to the end of the heap, which is kind of interesting, because it will end up writing in... Um, no, if it's equal to zero. Wow, there's only eight, yeah, uh, this actually doesn't go out of bounds because there's eight bytes of metadata and it is impossible to consume anything other than in eight byte chunks. And if you get to the very end where it would write out of bounds, uh, then new bytes remain would be zero and you would remove that next pointer and you would terminate that list. Okay, so uh, we can... Now, uh, we can now use this allocator. Okay. Um, so, uh, what we're gonna do is just try to allocate a big ass amount of memory. And then we're just gonna have an oracle here. We don't need to send memory anymore. Right, we don't need to do that any anymore. That was just for testing. Um, we can send a. Let's see if I can just send a, a flat zero, but that's gonna make a data section, isn't isn't it? Uh, and then we're gonna disable the. Uh, we're just gonna panic here, just to make sure we don't actually send that off. Stage one was too large. Okay. So, um, let mute temp is equal to a, a zero, and then we'll send a reference to a, can we do this? Nice. 188 bytes. Okay. Um, temp dot two le bytes. Okay. So what we're going to try to do is we're going to try to do an allocation. We're just going to do it all unsafe. Um, and then it is going to send us the address that it allocated. Um, and I guarantee you it's going to be 19742320. So, here we go. Uh, we're going to transmute. This is the allocator here. So this is alloc. This takes a heap pointer. So we'll just say a U size, that's the heap pointer, and a U size, which is the length the size we want to allocate, and it returns a pointer again. The address of this function is uh, underlying core allocate, and this is 1F37EC plus one, and then we are going to pass in uh, the address of that heap, the start of that heap, which is this, and then we are going to allocate uh, we're just going to allocate 1024 bytes. Okay. And this is uh, elk result is equal to this. And then we can just say elk result here. So in theory, this will perform an allocation. It should perform an allocation using this as the heap pointer. Um, the only reason we're not going one level above is just because we can consume the entire heap in theory. So we're gonna try this. Uh, we're actually gonna do two allocations here. Here we go. 
All right, so uh, can I can I pipe to XXD? Can you do that? Echo ASDF XXD. Yes. Okay, here we go. Um, this is going to do two allocations of 1024 bytes each, and it's going to give us the addresses back. Stage one is too large. You son of a bitch. Is it because we do it twice? Maybe we'll only do it once. Here we go. Bam. Allocation. And what is the address? Uh, one, one, nine, seven, four, two, three, twenty. And now if we run it again, uh, now we're at 27. Uh, and does that make sense? Yeah, that's 400 more. There we go. We did an allocation. Uh, sweet. So now what we can do is we can try and allocate the full size. 360, 1234. Let's try this. This should fail. We should get a null back. And there we go. Allocation failed. Um, and then the printer maybe fucked off and died. But that makes sense. So uh, we're going to wait for this printer to reboot. In fact, we are going to throw in our crash. We're going to force our crash. Um, so it just uh, rebooted. Um, we're going to enforce that we always crash here. Um, yeah, I think. Yeah, we'll just do this like this. And this should give us a valid allocation. It's going to use that whole fucking thing. I don't know if it rebooted successfully or whatever. Come on. Oh, it's booting. It's booting. Send. Oh, maybe that, uh, maybe that needs to flush. Send. Okay, uh, let's just, we'll get rid of that. Maybe it needs to flush. So it's booting again. All right, um, but we should, in theory, be able to allocate this amount. And if we go one byte over, so we'll do a little bit of A-B testing here. So this, run. And there's our allocation, and we got a successful allocation there. Now, if we go one byte over, so I'm going to reboot the printer. Um, actually, let's see if it's running right now. Okay. I'm waiting for it to reboot. Okay, it just rebooted. And now we want to see this fail to allocate. And if this fails to allocate, then we know, um, if, if this fails to allocate, then we know that we completely understand how this works. There's a heap that has enough, you know, storage to hold that many bytes. We're getting the exact pointer that we expect, uh, and everything makes sense. So this will hopefully return zeros. Or just crash or not work or something. So we'll see. Maybe it needs to, you know, reboot again. Who knows? Come on. Come on. Come on, dude. I might have to do a, a hard reboot of it. Um, there's also a chance that like we're fucking the allocator for future allocations, but I, I really don't understand why this is unstable, to be honest. That's a fresh reboot, and it's not giving me anything here. Weird. <gasps> Does it infinitely loop? No, because it would just end up returning none. 
No. That's weird. Because that works. But then why does that not work? Well, clearly there's something with that boundary. It's multiple of eight. It rounds it up. So it doesn't matter what we pass it. So, okay, it's rebooting. Let's try it again. Yeah, I, I don't know why this is so finicky and unstable, because it, it shouldn't be, in my opinion, right? But whatever. Uh, we have a way of allocating memory. Here, we can, alloc we can allocate a, a reasonable, reasonable amount of memory, and there you go. There's the allocation. Run it again, and maybe we'll get another allocation. Or maybe it'll fuck off and crash. I have no idea. I have no idea why... This is unstable. All right, uh, we're gonna do some testing. We're gonna just have this return. Uh, okay. And stage one is four bytes. That should just be like a BXLR effectively. Um. Yeah, this is just going to be a BXLR. Okay, so we are literally uploading a tiny, tiny, tiny thing to the stack. And we're not going to touch the stack or do anything. So basically, if there's instability here, right? The printer is freshly booted. If there's instability here and the printer stops responding, then we know that, like, we need to call the function. Okay. Okay, so the fact that that happened when we're literally just returning, all we're doing is we're jumping to our code and we're returning. Um, that, to me, is a pretty strong indicator that we need to probably call the function that we replaced, right? And let's do it again. I just want to A-B test. We should see, yeah, eventually it just fucking stops working, right? Um, and it reboots. So what we're going to try and do is get our stability to 100%. Uh, the code that we're uploading is literally just return, right? So there's no reason it should ever fail. Uh, so we're going to go and take a look at where we patch here. Um, where's our patch at? This. Okay. Um, so we have a Blixar 2. Uh, we could technically just Blixar 3. Or not Blix, but we could BXR 3. If we, if we, if this Blix is our 2, and then we BX R3, it should be the exact same as basically removing our patch, right? So that's effectively what we're gonna do here. Um, Um, God, that builds so fast that I'm like worried that it even worked. There we go. It's just a BXR3. So in theory, if we can just do this forever and it never breaks and never stops working, then that's a pretty... Damn it. Damn it, dude. Then why does it just stop working? Like, why would this, like, all we did 
is we change that to an FF. Move our two FF. R1SP. SP, R1 SP, fuck off, fuck off, um, is there something we don't understand here? We change that to an FF, this. Thank you so much for the 100 biddies. It was like this when I found it. Thank you so much. Hell yeah. So, SP. Um... I think I know what the problem is. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I know what the problem is. It's caching. It's instruction caching. Hundred percent it's instruction caching. All right, I need to I need to figure out what our stack is. It, it's a hundred a hundred fucking percent. It is it is caching, hundred percent. It's caching. Um, I need to figure out what our stack is. My I'm I am thinking since these pointers right since these heat pointers are in the eighteen range, I think eighteen is cached. Um. And I would guess maybe the zero to eight million is not cached, so we're gonna we're gonna go and leak the um, SP is zero. Uh, Asm move SP SP. Um, God, I always forget the syntax. Uh. SP is equal to ugh, fuck. What is the syntax, dude? It's uh reg uh in reg. This is an output reg that assigns to SP. I think that's correct. All right, so this is gonna hopefully tell us what the stack address is. Nineteen seventy four twenty three twenty. No, that's the allocation results. There's the stack. 1D4E D9A8. And then there we see we have a slightly different stack. It's off by a little bit, but slightly different. And it fucks off and dies. Um, and we're executing code off of the stack. Um, basically, I think we have caching problems. Now, given the stack is that at that address, I think... Um, So the flash patch doesn't matter. All that matters is the dynamic code that we're putting on the stack. So the only thing that matters is once we get to the stack, once we start getting to executing code off the stack, we start fucking caches. 
Um, and one way potentially around that would be uh, maybe, maybe, maybe this. All right. Um, We could basically change our patch, and we could, um, hmm. Okay, here's my theory. Here's a here's the theory. If we run this, it will have some non-zero crash rate. So there, it just crashed. We're going to go back to just the return, where it does nothing. Okay. Uh, it's rebooting. So we're going to only have that return. Basically, it's a knob, right? Now, good, 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 and then it dies. All right. My theory is that if I, if I drive activity on the printer... Um, like if I, basically if I throw this and then I go to the website and interact with the printer and do shit and then I throw it again, it will work. And then if I interact and uh, repeat that cycle, basically if I cause the caches to get evicted, um, now I can just flush the caches myself, I think. Um, but... The hypothesis, the cache hypothesis, did that fail literally the first time? Hmm. Hmm. I'm going to take a second nap here in a bit. Oh, no. Good. Um, okay, there's probably just not enough printer activity. I do think it's caching related. What's being cached? The binary that's being executed? The, the code that we're sending it is being cached. Hard to say uh, what this processor has for I caches and D caches, but I'm kind of curious if I were to flush caches myself. I mean, I don't really have a way of doing that before return. And we're going to be at a different place on the stack when we come back to execute. God damn it, dude. Um, <sighs> mm. Um, so 
So I don't know if this processor or ARM in general, um, hmm. Problem is that Dcache is not equal to iCache. Correct. Well, I'm guessing the processor can read the uh, can read instructions out of the data cache. Would be my like, I would imagine uh, that it can read instructions out of the data cache. Maybe it can't. Uh, but the 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 bigger issue at hand here is that the location the code is being executed is moving, and likely by only I don't know eight ten bytes is when the stack is adjusting. Uh, which is causing the code that was previously there to not be there anymore. And the iCache has old entries of like, oh, you want to execute at this address on the stack? Oh, well, there's a, there's a return there. And then you run it again, and it's moved. And it's like, oh, there's actually a move there, right? Something like that. Basically, the the instruction cache is stale. Now, I don't necessarily know if ARM... Um, can load instructions from the dcache. Um, basically, I don't know if you need to flush data to RAM in order to execute it, or if you can write something to cached memory and then directly start executing it. Um, and that is... That is tough. I don't know. Um, let's see. Uh, let's look for like arm m instruction cache coherency. I guess maybe not coherency. Uh, let's see. Well, that's cache coherence. Yeah, that's not going to be what we want. Uh, cache. Cold start. First read. On system power up, initial state of the cache is unknown. They're all disabled on reset. Before the cache is accessed, it needs invalidating. Okay, so all of this shit gets invalidated. Direct map cache. Self-associative cache. Data cache. Decache. Read through, write through. Uh, is this going to cover iCache, though? As with iCache, okay. Um, iCache and Dcache are optional, yep. iCache and Dcache do not need to be the same size. Hmm. Um, let's just see what the arm arm has to say. Um... Okay, here we go. Cache resources, so identifying them, blah, 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 enabling and disabling. I see enables or disables all instruction caches. Okay, cache behavior. Speculative instruction fetching, yep. 
All caches disabled at reset, undefined, preload data, preload instruction, branch predictors. Invalidate to the point of unification. Ordering. Okay. Yeah, I want like instruction fetch subsystem. Memory accesses, mm. memory model, caches. Okay, instruction fetches can go through L1 cache. So that's fine. So we don't need we don't need to flush out our data caches. Um we don't need to write our data caches out to DRAM because instructions should be able to be able to be able to be able to be fetched out of caches, at least from that diagram, but let's see, maybe that is like a more complex. Cache. But yeah, instruction fetches, it looks like that's going through the caches. Okay. Instruction coherency issues. Um, how far ahead is implementation defined? Blah, blah, blah. The processor might have fetched from memory at any time since the last context uh, synchronization. Any instructions uh, fetched this way may be executed multiple times. Um, does not require hardware to ensure coherency between instruction caches and memory even for regions of memory with shareable attributes. Does not require the hardware to ensure coherency. Okay. This means that for cacheable regions of memory, the instruction cache can hold instructions that were fetched from memory before the context synchronization operation. If software requires uh, coherency between the instruction execution and memory, it must manage this coherency using the ISB and DSB memory barriers and uh, cache maintenance operations. Preloading caches, okay. ISB flushes the pipeline so that all instructions that come after the ISB um, in program order are fetched from cache or memory only after it's been completed. Using an ISB ensures that the effects of context altering operations executed before ISB are visible to the instructions after that. Um, must choose how far ahead it prefetches instructions. Fixed or dynamic, uh, as well as choosing how many to prefetch. That the instruction in memory might have changed after it was prefetched before it was executed. If this happens, the modification to the instruction in memory does not normally prevent the already prefetched uh, instruction from executing to completion. The memory barrier instructions ISB, DMB, or DSB as appropriate to force execution when necessary. For detail, see ISB here. It flushes the pipeline to the processor such that all instructions following ISB are fetched from cache or memory after the instruction has completed. So we probably need an we probably need an ISB 
Um, in addition, it ensures that any branches that appear in program order... Okay. So basically... Uh, whoops. Well, back does not work in this document. Um... Flushes the pipeline to the processor. Such as those resulting from read or write accesses to the system control space that completed are visible to the instructions fetched after the ISB. Must use an ISB barrier, blah, blah, blah. Okay, here we go. Cache cleaning operations for self-modifying code, which is literally what we're doing. Write the instruction to memory. Ensure that the write is visible. Create a pointer to the system control space. Clean data cache by MVA to the point of unification. Ensure visibility of data cleared from the point of cache. And validate the instruction cache by MVA to point of unification. And validate the branch predictor ensure the completion of the invalidations, and then synchronize the fetch stream. So technically, this is what we need to do. Um, um, Write the instruction, right? So this is basically do the thing, make sure the write's complete, flush the data cache to unification, um, it's interesting that the data cache has to be written out on le like, I guess the point of unification in, in many situations is probably going to be L1 cache, but it basically means make sure that shit is, okay, RT in this case, RY is the address that has been affected. Um, ensure visibility and validate the instruction cache. Validate the branch predictor. All right, so we don't know. Um, we can look at what they do when they load code. Um, let's look at, uh, let's pop open. Um, probably, honestly, the original might be a good place. Okay. Decompress RLE, here we go. So decompress RLE. Um, decompress RLE has the fun stuff. Uh, okay, so that jumps to decompress RLE. Enter after RLE decompress. Um, hmm, decompress internal. I want one of the, like, easier ones to look at. Decompress. Because we know that they, like, invalidate caches right after. Uh, on one of these, they just went to invalidate caches. Maybe flush caches. That is invalidate entire instruction. Hmm. 
move to data synchronization. Okay, um, so we know that this we know that this instruction uh, is valid on this processor. So we're gonna go and figure out what that is. Um, where's our browser? We where did I, where did I put my browser? Oh, it's behind this. Sick. All right. Um, so uh, we're gonna look for MCR. Core registers. I just want to find the uh, MSR banks here. MSR, MSR. Special register encodings for ARM v7M. Um, we don't know if we're on ARM v7M, right? That's one of the things that's difficult here. But... And... What if your first RCE contains these instructions and you only mem uh, modify instructions after that? Uh, so far, it seems your first execution always worked. Um, so, like, unfortunately, I can't really guarantee that. Obviously, I can pivot out of where I am, um, but there's, the order of operations do not work. I can't invalidate the caches of the code that I'm running, um, if that makes sense. Now, technically, I could, uh... I could branch, I could, basically I could potentially like modify LR and Bix to something that invalidates and like flushes all the caches that exists already in the code. Um, so I just want to figure out what this is doing. Special encodings. Mm, that's not what I want. MSR. Spectreg. Like... Maybe this is uh, a maybe a an A processor. I hate how much variance there is in ARM. Oh wait, these might be what we want. Instruction set attributes. Debug. Um, there are a subset of that in A and R. So are you supposed to just access these addresses directly? We in ya today. I could literally try to read one of these. Let's try and read one of these. Just see what we get. Core pointer read volatile. 
this as uh, const u32. So we're just literally going to try to read that value and just see what happens. Oh, I have return here. Shit. Okay, dead. Uh, hard to say if it rebooted because it failed on the second run or if that is not valid. Um, but we might have to look at like ARM v. Uh, I don't know. ARM coprocessor. ARM uh, M. Maybe the M series doesn't have coprocessor. I I don't know. Coprocessor interface. So V8M, V8M has a coprocessor interface. All right, so I think it's safe to say this processor is probably not an M then. Um, right, it, it wouldn't make much sense for this to be an M processor then. It, it, like, yeah, so this is not going to succeed. This will fail. Yeah, and it's gonna reboot the printer. Okay. So, uh, let's look at ARM v7a uh, coprocessor registers. Hopefully I can find like a good summary. It'd be really nice. Um, What is this? I think this is just the ISA. MSR. Yeah, uh, arm v7 arm. Come on, I really don't want to have to go and download it and find it. Oh my god, dude. ARM v7 AR TRM. This might, this might be good enough. Debug shit. Okay. For A and R. Coprocessors and system control. Okay, uh, CP15, that's what it's doing, obviously. So we have a CP15. Here we go. A has virtual memory. R has protected memory. Yeah, this could be an R. Who knows? Um... Let's... Let's assume we're a... Mm. Oh my god, dude. You can't fucking use back in this editor. And this fucking PDF viewer. You could in Firefox's. PDF -um is absolute dog shit compared to Firefox's built-in reader. This is so bad, dude. Holy shit. Oh my god, dude. I love the Firefox PDF reader. Yeah, it's actually fucking usable. And it doesn't have a pop-up bookmark thing. You can have bookmarks on the side. Wow. Yeah, this is fucking dog shit, dude. Um, well, now we have to go and find that again. Mm-hmm. Now I'm just going to keep doing that. C 
Firan, Isaac. Um. There we go. So we've got. Uh, I always forget. I always forget how to read these instructions. Um. So we're on CR seven. Opcode. Letter well, CR seven, CR ten. I think these might be in order, so we're at probably this invalidate everything is a, a zero and then a CR seven. CR seven CR five. Yeah, here we go. Yep. Um and then a zero. Instruction barrier operation. Interesting. So, um, basically, we want cache and branch predictor maintenance operations, multi processing. We probably want these 705, right? And that's what we already see here. Um,. So, validate all instruction caches to point of unification. Um... So basically, I think we need to do a memory barrier. Um, let's see if we can dupe this. We basically need to do a memory barrier. Uh, we need to, well, we need to do a memory barrier. Then we need to do a data cache flush. And then we need to do another memory barrier. And then we need to do an instruction cache flush. And then we need to do an instruction barrier, I think, is the correct way. Let's see what they say. S self. Which is weird, because I would I would think that the instruction cache should be fucking coherent with the data cache, but it but it's not. Um self modify code. Um when using self-modifying code, you must use cache maintenance and barrier instructions to ensure synchronization. Okay, here we go. Um, when a cache or branch predictor maintenance, blah, 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 appears in program... Um, Enter this code with Rx at the instruction location. Oh, it's a little bit simpler. Oh, I maybe had it right, though. Uh, write the instruction. So do that shit. Clean the data cache uh, for the instruction location. So basically flush the data cache. Then DSB. Oh, you don't have to DSB after the write. Interesting. So we can store, clean the data cache, then DSB to ensure visibility of the data cleaned from the data cache, then invalidate the instruction cache, invalidate the branch uh, BTC, branch, uh, is that branch predictor or something? By MVA, branch, 
BTC. The fuck is BTC? And then a DSB, and then an ISB. So the question is, is this, is this meant for being, you know, you know, gentle? Because I just want to do, like, fucking invalidate literally everything, flush that shit out, and then DSB, ISB, <laughs> right? Dude, I have no idea what the fucking uh, BTC is. Branch something? Ooh, this one looks fun. Invalidate all instruction caches, inner shareable to POU. Here, this is what I want. Invalidate all instruction caches to point of unification. Also flushes branch target cache. Oh, that's BTC, the branch target cache. Yep. So can I just do one of these bad boys? Um, so I should, in my opinion, I should be able to write the memory, make sure data cache is flushed, DSB to make sure that the data has been actually flushed, uh, to POU, and then we can blast them. This, this says to invalidate instruction cache and BTC by MVA, but we can just fucking go in there blasting and invalidate all the instruction caches and flush uh, the branch target cache, and that handles this. And then I guess we need a DSB, apparently, because apparently uh, you need a DSB as well as an ISB. I thought ISB was a superset of DSB, but I guess it's not. So... So what we should be able to do is do our do our normal stuff, flush our caches, our data caches, DSB, then do one of these instructions, and then do a DSB ISB, and we should be good, right? And that's my view. Um, now the question is, is this valid on this processor? Who knows? Uh, given this one doesn't have any annotations, uh, C only applies to separate instruction caches, does not apply to unified caches. You're going to ID the processor. Um, oh, nice. We can get the very specific architecture. There we go. This is what we want right here. Uh, okay, where's our code now? Here it is. All right. Might have to reboot the printer, we'll see. I'm just skeptical that this will work.
Yeah. Reboot it again. Um, that seems to be crashing it. Hmm. Rebooting again. Maybe we're just getting unlucky and we're just getting fucked here. Don't call the allocate. I mean, it doesn't really matter, but sure. Not that big of a deal, but... No. Oh, son of a bitch, dude. Be right back. Okay, um... Yeah, I just... I, like... This is exactly what I was expecting, is that this instruction just doesn't fucking work. <laughs> like... I guess we're looking at PMSA? VMSA. Let's look at VMSA. Uh, it looks like it's the same. So VMSA, we're on P15, zero, zeros. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay, and then for PMSA, I think it's the same thing. Yep, same thing for PMSA as well. Um... Read MIDR needs privilege code, privilege mode. I mean, I kind of highly doubt that there are different privilege levels on this printer. Um. Hmm. <sighs> Let's just make sure it works without this. Let's just make sure we didn't like scuff something. But yeah, okay. Yeah, it's definitely that MRC that's not taking. 
I mean, maybe maybe they do have different privilege levels, but I'm just I'm just so skeptical. <laughs> I'm so skeptical that they have privilege levels on this fucking thing. Um, may, I guess maybe they do. Maybe they do. It just seems pointless. <laughs> Let's try, uh... Let's try to flush caches. MCR P15 0 R0 CR7 CR50. Let's just blast one of these out real fast. Uh, so this is gonna, I don't know, invalidate instruction caches or some shit. Yep. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, I think that didn't work. I mean, I don't know if we threw it twice on the same run. Color me surprised. They drop privs? No fucking way, dude. No way. Huh. So... Let's see what Supervisor Call does. Uvar one in LR minus four. So there's a decash flush. BXR zero. Let's see what uh, this is. Validate entire instruction. Jump. So that jumps to there, uh, in what manner? LDRPC that. Then that does a branch and link. Hmm. Okay, let's see what this does. That feels kind of like a, a, a reboot to some extent. Data sync, invalidate data cache by MVA.
so um I'm curious if they use these service calls to refresh caches. Reset jumps to here. That looks like an actual reset. Um... Okay, prefetch abort, data abort. Jumps to here, to here. That loops forever. Not used, IRQ, thick. Yeah, so we can use a supervisor call and we can use a supervisor call to invalidate, uh, to basically flush data caches. Um, so what is that? Uh, uh, a 15, 7, 10. Let's see if we can find that. 15. Doop, 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 doop. Almost there. One, a couple more pages. This is PMSA, but it's probably fine. Uh, 15, 7, 10. 15, 7, 10. And I think it was zeros for everything, right? Uh, zero, 4. Okay, so it's this. 0, 10, 4. Uh, data barrier. Let's see it. Uh, four, seven, ten, four. Um, seven, what? Seven zero ten four. Okay. Is it? Um, why do I feel like it's not in these tables? Uh, we could look at uh, VMSA. Oh, seven zero ten four. Uh, it's a DSB. Okay, so this is a DSB. Yeah, data synchronization. Okay, makes sense. Um, and then R four just I think doesn't matter. And then there is a uh, seven fourteen. Let's take a look at what R seven fourteen is. So basically, a DSB. Then we have a 14, uh, looks like this. Looks like uh, uh, opcode one. Oh, it is this. So it is a clean and invalidate uh, data or unified cache line by address to a point of coherency. So invalidate data cache. Yeah, and it's not only invalidate. Um, so we're on seven, 14, and then one. So this will in, uh, clean data, which will cause it to get flush and invalidate. So technically we can do that. I guess maybe there's no way to change, uh, to flush the instruction cache on this processor.
kind of interesting. Um, too bad we can't use the exploit to dump the CPU info. Oh, we can. Just takes a, a decent amount of work. We just haven't gotten to that yet, but wouldn't be too difficult. Um... Might be fine without instruction cache. Like, what we're running into might be a data only thing. I I don't know. That doesn't. Hmm. I don't think that's the case. Unlikely to have stuff in it. Well, that's the problem. We can't run this twice. We can pretty much always run this once, and that's super easy. So, um. I think uh, what we're gonna do is we're just basically we're gonna we're gonna get supervisor, uh, and we're gonna go we're gonna make a stage two and we're gonna get supervisor execution. Uh, we're just gonna do that right now. Just get this shit over with. All right. Um. So to do that, we have to find receive. Strings table is kind of broken. Ghidra. Uh. Let's just look for receive. All right, come on. Come on. Come on. Come on, dude. Where are my x -refs? This is RAM, too. Subsystem receive. Come on, where are the fucking X refs, dude? Maybe it hasn't found send and receive. It'd be pretty crazy, but whatever. Uh, we'll just go to send. We'll just assume that receive is probably nearby. Well, there's send. Here's receive from. Okay, and then receive is probably right before it. Yeah, like this? No? That's still receive from. All right, is this receive? Ping received from. Send. Send to. Okay, what is this? Send to. Close. Set sock opt. Get sock opt. See from. Th this might be it. It's just. Ping receive from. Hmm. Hey, there's receive. Okay. Um. Pub FN receive self uh, buff mutable reference to a slice result this. Smack this somewhere. Okay, here we go. Basically, it's the same, almost the same thing as mute pointer now. This is a mutable reference. Uh, make sure all bytes were red. Okay. And this is a 1E8128. This is a receive. All right, so... Um, 
I32, that, the size, and then that returns the I size, and then we make sure that we received everything. And this is a receive, a buffer from the connected socket, returns a non if the entire buffer was not filled in a single receive. Okay, so we should be able to do a socket.receive. So we'll allocate that. Um, what is this? How, how big is that? Let's just say, let's just say 128K, uh, 256K. We'll do 256K. So we're gonna receive 256K into this allocation result. Um, let's buffer is equal to, and we'll say if elk results is not, if it's equal to zero, um, then we'll return error. Okay, and then otherwise, uh, buffer is equal to core slice from raw parts mutable, and we'll take the allocation results as mutable u8, and this is uh, 256 times 1024. Then we can receive into buffer and make sure that that was successful. Okay, so let's just make sure that builds and fits, and it looks like that does build and fit. What are we at on size? 212 bytes. Okay, so we have space. Um, and then we can jump into that. Um, so we can just say... Um, Grab that. Grab that transmute. Crashed. Okay, that's fine. Um, transmute from that into an extern fn. Is that the way that we've been stylizing that? Yeah. Okay. And this is going to be. Um, buffer. We'll just say as pointer. Uh huh. So we'll transmute that and then we'll just call it. Bam. Nice, we got our connection. That's good. Um. So I think that should work. That should successfully. Obviously that receive is going to fail. Um, but that should get us to the next stage. So we'll copy stage one to stage two. Vim uh, stage two, cargo clean, arm cargo.lock. Vim cargo .toml. This is stage two. Okay. Now we're gonna build the stage one. Same thing here. Then we're gonna build the stage two. Oops. Build the stage two. Object copy stage two on stage two to stage two. Stage one. Read the stage two shell code. Stage two, stage two, stage two, stage two. 256 times 1024. How are you compiling these naked payloads with cargo? I mean, we're just, uh, I mean, we set up the build environment that it will, you know, target basically uh, no standard environments. Um, yeah, uh, so basically that's that's what we do. And then uh, we just rip out the, uh, the sections that we're interested in, mainly the load sections. So, um, 
yeah, we're just using build standard. We're using uh, core, and that's it. We basically just have no dependencies. Rust has no dependencies in libcore pretty much by default. Uh, so that's basically how we how we do that. So, um... Okay, and then we're going to do stage 2.resize OUA 256 times 1024. Other way. Okay. Uh, and we're just going to have this panic so it doesn't actually throw it for now. Make that mute. So we're going to pad that out to exactly 256k. Um, so our stage 2 obviously is identical right now. Stage 2 source main. Uh, and we want to do the same thing, but we're going to have this connect out. So this stage 2, we're going to have go to 1, 2, 3, 5. So we'll listen on 1, 2, 3, 5. And then this is going to do a socket... We're just gonna send. Uh, we're gonna send moose. We should be able to actually send a string now. Um, yeah, it's pretty big, just due to some of the padding and stuff going on there. Uh, as long as the entry point is actually at the start, which I guess we don't a hundred percent know if that's the case. So we're gonna look at the stage two. Oh yeah, the start is definitely not going to be at the start. Um, we might have to make a linker script just to make sure that the text section goes to the start. Unfortunately. Hmm. Um... Hmm. Uh, it's kind of annoying. Can I, um... Same as section start with text. What? Set address of section. What if I just set it to zero? SP um And the entry point symbol. A request creation of those. Um just looking through at some nice things that I can maybe do here to put it in a, a nice shape. But linker script is definitely probably the correct solution here. 
We're just trying to cheese it if we can. I'm guessing if I just set the text section, specify initializer function. Can you even set the section in Rust? Can I do this? Can I have the section specified for a function? And I don't know if I can. Hmm. Push state, reproduce. It's an address of section. So I can, like, let's just try this. Uh, I think I can say link args. T text zero. Expected a table? What? What do you expect? Maybe this isn't actually a thing. See link arg equals this. Let's try this. Apparently you can use link section as section name. Okay. And let's take a look. Did this reorder? Yes. So now that is at zero. Now, unfortunately, we can't guarantee that that's actually the entry point. So if we said like um, extra and fn moose, hopefully we can fuck this up and cause this to be um, I want moose to end up like going before it or something like that. Hmm. Link section is equal to, let's try this. Let's set a link section moose. It built, uh, let's do a read elf L on that. Okay, we don't have a moose, but maybe that got removed. Let's try this. Hey, we have a moose. Fantastic. Um, and what we should be able to do then What do you do? Uh
section start. Link arg section start moose. I forget the format for this. Add used, okay. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's this is the correct syntax. Let's try this. Must be with a static variable. Anyways, there is moose. Let's say inline never on this. And hopefully that will cause a text section. So there is a text section. Um, okay, so moose is the first thing that comes in. Um, and that makes sense. Entry point is zero, right? And if we didn't do that, if we had this is link section text, um, yeah, entry point is that. So basically, by setting this to um, entry section, entry section, we basically force that this specific function needs to be jammed in that entry function or entry section. It's really good. Okay. And there we go, we have an entry section. That has to go at zero, which means that's the first thing, which means we can just jump. We know that the entry point of this program is exactly at zero. Um, now, what we can do is try and cut down on the size of this by cutting down some of the padding here. So, um, Uh, crap, I align. Oh. Do not align sections. Let's try that. Link args. Let's see if this works. I don't know if it does. I don't know how those need to be separated. Okay, now stage two is 205 bytes. And if we look at stage two, uh, dot bin, We'll have moose at the end, and everything will be like super packed in here. So, um, and magic is really what we wanted. Turn off page alignment of sections and disable linking against shared libraries. If the output format supports uh, Unix style magic numbers, mark the output as n magic. I think n magic is fine here. It should still actually uh, put the correct alignment uh, on structures. So if I were, if I were to make um, a struct moose, can you recommend a tutorial uh, or book for Rust? Yeah, the Rust book, the official Rust book. Um, we'll just have this hold a, a single U8, and then we'll uh, wrapper align. 4096, I think that's the right syntax. Okay, and then um, static foo moose is moose zero. So that shouldn't actually cause anything to really get created and then used will hopefully make that. Yeah, I think that's still gonna get removed. Um, Let's just, uh, let's just do ref foo dot zero. See if that causes it to get used. No. 
Retro line four thousand ninety six. Hmm. Let's do static mute and then just do foo dot zero is five. Hmm. Is that getting... Volatile. Um... BSS garbage. Yeah, let's see if we initialize it. Yeah, it was BSS. Thank you. Thank you. Um, okay. So now it's 8K in size, which makes sense. Um, perfect. Perfect. All right. So I think this is working as intended. Um, yep. An entry section. First thing. No surprise. BSS is uh, for uh, basically zero initialized data that is allocated at uh, at um, it's basically created when the uh, binary is loaded runtime zero data yeah and technically right now we don't handle BSS correctly anyways uh, let's send apples. Okay. Stage one cargo config. Same thing here. That'll potentially cut down on size. And then entry section will do the same thing for the entry points. Um, basically, we're making sure that all of those. They're getting assigned that entry section, and the entry section is guaranteed to be set at the very start so that we know that we can jump into it. Um, we technically are not really accommodating for a BSS right now. Um, I don't know if there's a way to include BSS. Uh, Object copy BSS. Yeah, I don't know if there's a way for us to basically force that the BSS exists. Technically, we could probably just put a dummy section at kind of the end or something, but whatever. We'll just keep our eye on it. It'll it'll end up biting us and we'll get really confused. Um All right, so that's going to download the next stage. It's going to download it as 2K. Um, yeah, even with a linker script, it's hard. Like, you pretty much just, like, literally have to grep if there's a BSX set, BSS section by running, like, obj or read elf on it. It's, yeah, it's stupid. It's really stupid, dude. Um, so, uh, we've got one, two, three, five here. And then what we want to do is basically set up, um... So we're going to send the exploits, and before we do that, we're going to do a standard thread spawn by move, and then uh, we'll do use standard uh, Rust listen, uh, the TCP server, yeah, this net TCP listener. Okay, and then we'll do TCP listener bind uh, 1234. We're just going to unwrap on these for now. 
let mute listener. Okay. Uh, for stream in uh, listener dot incoming print uh, got connection. Okay, and we'll go with that for now. Um, we won't get a response back until that returns, so technically we don't need to wait for that thread to exit, but let's see what happens here. Got a connection. Perfect. From this, and we should be able to say... Uh... Incoming yields an incoming, which iterators, what does it give us? Uh, TCP streams, remote address, uh, local adder, peer adder. Um, stream is equal to stream dot unwrap. Rebooted. Come on. There we go. Yep, we got a connection from the printer. Good. Good. Um, then uh, what we can do is stream.write all ref, um, I guess, stage two. And then we can say uh, use standard IO right. Unwrap on that. Okay, so that's going to then send that stage to, uh, which will be exactly 256K. This is gonna read exactly 256K. Once it has been received, if it received it fully, then it will jump into it uh, as arm code, and then that will connect to one, two, three, five, and send apples. Broken pipe. Um, okay, maybe we have to have it read in pieces or something like that. Well, we're not really sending that much stuff up right now. So what we're gonna do is just ignore the error of receive. We're just gonna, we're just gonna wing it. And hopefully it read enough bytes. <laughs> we'll just see. Uh, okay. We did get this to, uh, call out to us. Um... A-P-P-L-E-S. So it sent us six bytes, so we definitely hit the second stage. All right. Um, let server is equal to this. And then we'll do a server.join.unwrap. I think we might be killing it. Like, maybe... Oh, hmm. Yeah, maybe we're getting that response early or some shit. Whatever. Let's just see what happens here, because now we won't exit... For a little bit longer. We'll probably still get broken pipe. And we do. Okay, that's sending that out. Um, okay. Um, so, if res is equal to negative one. Is that correct? Receive returns negative one on error, I think. Return value, negative one, or bytes received. So, uh, if it's not equal to negative one, then 
it is res as u size, which is the number of bytes that were read into the buffer. Okay, that's trying to connect out. Um, so then what we can do is uh, while uh, let mute pointer is equal to mutable reference to buffer, while pointer.lan is greater than zero, receive pointer. Um, and then we can say uh, bread uh, pointers equal to uh, mutable reference to pointer bread dot dot. Put that in a question mark. Okay, so that should receive 256 kilobytes. All right? Stage one is too large. 296 bytes. Fuck, dude. Hmm. Hmm. Oh, also, I don't know if I have things set as pick and stuff, too. Let's go, let's go back to this. Let's just see. So. Okay, that sent that out. Um, obj dump D stage, uh, stage two, C8, B0. Load that. That's the address. Um, I think that's not being built as pick. Oh yeah, this is definitely being built as static. Stage two, uh, car cargo config, rusty, uh, Ross configured. Cargo config. Target. Profile. Um. What's the flag for this? Relocation model. Yeah, let's see where I can set that. Pick. Um, okay, so where can I set this? Obviously, I know I can set it in Rust flags, but I don't want to. Well, C um Relocation model is pick. So that's on the stage two. So then we'll see how much that affects the binary. Ah, oh, shit. Technically, this is going to run, isn't it? Oh, 
Oh, the printer's just off. Okay. Um, obj dump. So now, we're probably gonna see some ADRs in here instead. Or add PCs. 5C. Hmm. Hmm. Apples. Oh, nice. We did it. Looks good. All right. Uh, so we definitely have a stage two. Um, and we can also set that for this because technically we want all of this code to be pick anyways. Nice. What did pick change for that to work? It didn't assume that we were loaded at address zero, so it didn't use a hard-coded address zero. Um, it actually derived the address from where we were loaded in memory. Okay. We use DWM here, it says in the corner. Um, stage one, 224 bytes. Let me see if I can put a question mark on that. Let's see if we can receive all, all of those bytes, all 256K, please. Fuck. Fuck. I wonder if I can read 4K. No. Really? Hmm. I mean, we might have to switch it to thumb to fit in this size, or apply a slightly different patch. There's there's a bunch of different ways that we can actually go about this. Um, Yeah, so it's definitely trying to send all of- Oh, that got 4K. Okay, let's try 256. Let's just see. Maybe there's just a lot of flukes. Sent- Okay, nope. Didn't get all 256K. There's probably a cap to the maximum size that we can receive in one fell swoop. And we're just gonna binary search and find that. We're gonna try this a couple more times. Printer's booting. Let's try this. Milkman's going strong. Hell yeah. Sent. Yep. Gone. Alright, let's try 32k. Honestly, it probably makes sense that it's within whatever the TCP window size is, which it probably is using, uh, it's probably using byte level windows, so it's probably up to 64k. So we'll see what we can do here. Son of a bitch, dude. Just... Mmm. Mmm. Okay. 
Okay, what about 8k? No. No. <sighs> okay, let's have this only return an error if it's an error. So we'll go to this model again. If it's not equal to negative one, then it is res as u size. So it's the number of bytes read. So now this will only fail. This will only give up if it didn't read anything at all. Um, and then we'll do sock.send. Uh, let sent is equal to this sent dot two le bytes. So then we can do let mute uh, temp mm, ou eight four stream dot um, read exact uh, temp unwrap print response this uh. U32 from LE bytes temp to LE bytes. Okay, so let's see. We might not fit in our size anymore. But this will allow us to maybe send some data back, but I don't think we're going to fit. Hmm. Nope. Damn, dude. Damn, damn, damn. I'm gonna get rid of this error check. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Send exact. Let's do a write. Oh, we aren't listening. Well, it rebooted anyways. Uh, print wrote this. Or we'll say sent. This bytes. Is the is he doing the multi stage thing? Yeah, that's what we're working on right now. Okay, let's go. Response 1460. Wow! That's uh that's a that's a full packet. Ah aha uh -huh. 1460 bytes. That is a packet. That is basically a maximum MTU. Um Okay, um, hmm. I don't know if I'm going to get this to fit.
That's too big, dude. Um, let's see how... Oh, we've got panicking stuff now. Okay. Uh, array chunks. Let's do that. Basically, we have to get rid of that panic. As chunks mute. As chunks. Array chunks. Array chunks mute. Okay, sweet. Yes! It fits, dude! Fuck yeah. Now, does it work? No, not necessarily. But uh, that's fine. Let's see if we can add this uh, check in here. This uh, check for allocation failure. Oh yeah, easy. Okay, and then uh, what we wanna do is put this as if res is not equal to buff.len, then, or if it is equal to buff.len, then it is successful. So if res is equal to buff.len, then some, okay, or. Mm, as I size. Oh, um, right exact. It's gonna reboot. Uh, right all. We're not sending a response back anymore. Broken pipe on send. That just default them. Yeah, everything is default. Mm. Let's try. Let's try four K. <gasps> oh, they're probably gonna sometimes come through larger. Is probably what's gonna happen. That's probably what's gonna fucking happen. Um, shit. Things are gonna get buffered and it's not. Well, I mean, if we say I wanna only read 1024, I would expect it would only give me 1024. Let's try this. Okay, uh, so we can do a 4K. Okay, let's try 32K. It's just gonna have to reboot, it's fine. Go through, okay. Let's see if we can do 32K. Let's 
Why are we getting a broken pipe? Are we just sending data too fast? And it just can't keep up with it? Can we do 8K? Now it's got to reboot again. Buffer as pointer. What the fuck? Like, it literally must be giving me a reset. And that's so weird. I don't get why that would be happening. Alright, let's not do error checking and just see. We'll go to 32, and we'll see with no error checking what happens. Come on. Okay. All right, let's see if we can. I know we keep doing this, but. Um, res as you size. Okay, let's see if we can get the pointer based one to work. Let mute. Offset is equal to zero four. Uh, while offset is not equal to buffer.len. Then we will do a, uh, let bread is equal to, uh, what is it, socket? Yes, sock, receive, mutable reference to buffer dot dot, uh, offset dot dot, question mark, and then offset plus equals bread. Let's see if that fits. I don't think it will, but stage one is too large. And do we have panics in there? We do. Okay, so we're gonna do um, get unchecked. Get on check mute. Did we do it? Did we just barely squeak it in to a small enough size? 236 bytes, fuck yeah, let's do 256K. All right, here's the full transmission. It's gonna reboot, it was in a fuck state anyway, so I'm not too worried about that one not working. But we do check for errors on receive. Offset plus equals bread. This does a write all. This makes sure that we just have a larger buffer in case it uses the buffer that we pass as part of the windowing uh, for TCP, which I wouldn't be surprised. Okay. There we go. All 256K sent down. Fuck yeah. Um... All right, let's try and do something more ridiculous. Let's try, let's try uh, 25 megs. OK. 
Okay, so now we're gonna try to send 25 megs. It's gonna reboot. Oh, fuck. Well, now it's really gonna reboot. Uh, 25 megs, 25 megs. Pat it out with zeros. Assert, yeah, that assertion doesn't mean anything. We're just hacking stuff in. And we could make a shared library between these where we have like a constant for these sizes and stuff when we're sharing stuff like this. And here we go. Hmm. It didn't, it didn't, uh, it didn't reboot yet. <laughs> S it didn't, it didn't reboot yet. <laughs> Um... So we send exactly 25 megs. We expect 25 megs. Hmm. Let's try two megs. Now it's going to die. <laughs> Time to make some beds. <laughs> Let's fucking go. Oh, it's rebooting right now. I'm going to trust Linux to try to keep making that connection. Yes, and it did it. Hey, two megs. We uploaded two megs. Okay, we can do literally whatever we want to this fucking printer now. Woo. Woo. We're going to do 256k, just because I think that is plenty, plenty of space, 256k. So I'll allocate 256k, check for the allocation failure, and this is our stage one. So um, this is get a Rust slice to our allocation, this is perform an allocation. Uh, get a rust slice to our allocation. Um, read um, in a loop until we get all 256 uh, kilobytes we expect. And then this is a jump into the stage two. And that's it. So we should be able to just run this. Boom. Bank. Good. Fucking instant. That echoes in. Uh, so I think we're basically done with this. So this is uh, connect to the stage uh, two server. And that will just provide that stage two. And everything here is nice and lightweight. That offset will not go out of bounds. Well, technically socket could return a bad value. So technically it could go out of bounds, but we're fine with that. It's the only way we're going to fit. Now stage two, we can start getting, you know, more, more and more exciting here. Um... So what we're gonna do is we're gonna connect out of here, uh, and let's let's get um, let's um, let's uh, let's do something fun, chat. Um, okay. 
So stage two, we can do whatever the fuck we want, and we're gonna prove that we can do whatever the fuck we want by doing this. Uh, I think we're gonna set this socket globally here. Unless <laughs> so we just wanna keep reconnecting. <laughs> Let's just try this for funsies. Um, we're just gonna do sock dot send s <laughs> unwrap on both of those for funsies. Hello world. Uh, and then a number. I don't know. That'll probably actually get cons prop, but whatever. So one two three five. Let's try it. Uh, print. Yes, this is crate printer. Oh, we'll need to listen harder. Um... What's the netcat? Keep listening. Re listen again. It's big L for mcat, and then for this, it's some other shit. <laughs> Keep inbound sockets open for multiple connects. K. Okay. Oh, do we have BSS now? Mm. Ooh. Data with three locations. Okay, uh, where do we expect to get loaded? What's the address that we expect? Um, we expect this as our address. All right. So here's what we can do. Dot, uh, stage two. Cargo this. Uh, we will leave it as static. Then we're going to set the entry at this address. So now it's going to be static again. And the entry point should be there. That's what we're going to load it. Technically, we're doing a dynamic allocation, but we're going to expect that it loads at the same location. Um, so let's take a look. Read elf. We no longer have relocation, and our entry point is 19742320. So then what we can do is down here, um, sp stage one source. Um, if allocation result is not equal to this, right, uh, we expect a very specific address back from this allocation come on it might be trying to connect out so we'll reset it Did a full power off. We'll see if this just connects in and if I just leave it here when the printer is ready to receive commands. Okay.
Is that not the address that we're expecting? Uh, I think it is. Okay, just rebooted. One, two, three, five. Nineteen seventy four, twenty three twenty. Nineteen. Nineteen seventy four, twenty three twenty. Hmm. 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 Let's try this for now. Okay. Sent data. I would send a five. What is a five? Would we see a five in a terminal? I should have sent a fucking four one. Let's try that. It's gonna have to reboot now. Yeah. Uh, does dash v work verbose? Will that show like when a new connection comes in bounds? Listening on that. I'm guessing it will say when it when a new connection comes in. Hmm. I wonder if we're not reliably getting that address. There it is, and there's the A. Okay, fantastic. Let's try this. So that will connect out, send, and then they'll close the socket, do that a shit ton of times. Broken pipe, it's gonna reboot. It's booting, waiting for it to come up, and then we'll see. Basically, it won't run that code unless it gets mapped specifically at the address that we expect. Um, oh, you know what? I don't think there's anything guaranteeing that that is the first section. It is the first section, but anyways. Hmm. That's weird. Thank you for the hundred biddies. It was like that when I found. It was like this when I found it. Hell yeah. We need to figure out. Um. Like, does it just sometimes not work? Does it sometimes just not get that address, maybe? Or is it due to the print? Is Like, I don't understand how the print would fuck up uh, the sending of the payload. Because that should be detached from whatever is in this payload. We should still see successfully sent sort of stuff. Uh, which is really weird to me. There we go. Hello world. Um, okay. 
Okay. Okay. Okay. All right, let's do, um... Where'd the five go? I probably just didn't make a new connection, or maybe this didn't listen hard enough. Maybe, uh, maybe that connection didn't get shut down, and since the connection didn't get shut down, it didn't go to listen to the next thing. Like, a bunch of things could have happened, right? Um, so, uh, static, um, I think we have to do static mutes, uh, and this is like debug socket. And this is a socket. Um, a maybe on in it socket. Actually, can we just say option socket? Just say it's none. And then we can say. Uh, Let's do uh, debug socket is equal to sum this. Okay. And then this will be debug socket, the global. Um, if let sum debug, uh, we'll just say sock is equal to debug sockets. We're going to have to mark a lot of this on safe, but that's fine. Sock, send. Uh, unwrap is acceptable here, in my opinion. Debug socket, use of immutable static, on safe. Both of these. Okay. So now that will set up a connection once. Fill that in. Ooh, we're gonna have BSS now, aren't we? We're probably gonna have BSS. I guess we can ref that. Hello world. Let's see if we have BSS. We do not. Okay. I guess static mute. Uh, no, static mute could go in BSS when we're setting none. Most of this memory is zeroed out anyways, but, um, okay, hello world, and then we got nothing after that. Hmm. Why would I not be able to send multiple times? Um, hmm, getting stuck on that, uh, five. Is it the arm EIDX stuff? Because that's like mixed in there now. Let's not do any remove sections. We'll just O binary copy that shit. O binary should basically copy the in memory representation to it, so it's just rebooting. Um Hello world. Hmm. That's not it. What would cause that? Um, th 
stage two cargo dot let's say uh debug is true that'll build it with uh, debug information so we'll be able to actually like see kind of what's getting generated and built sent data stage two. Uh, so now we can object dump. Let's look at stage two, and we can do a LD on this. Uh, and we can do a demangle. Uh, you know, I don't want L, to be honest. I'll go with this. I wonder if there's an instruction that is not supported here. Because we're building for ARM v7. Like, who knows? This could be an ARM v5 printer. Um, let's make sure the entry point is in the correct location. That's text and your start entry section. Yeah, that looks fine. That entry section. Um, hmm. Hmm. There's no relocations. Hmm. Hmm. There's a CPU ID, but we can't use it yet. So... Like, the only thing that would really make sense to me here is the instruction set. That time it didn't connect out. I think it hasn't rebooted, to be honest. Hmm. Hmm. Let's try it. Let's just try this. Let's just try. Let's try loop hello world. Try this. None of the numerical formatting stuff. Okay, yeah, I, yep, we're looping. Um, so something with uh, that number. Okay. Um, and okay, it hasn't connected. Maybe it hasn't rebooted. Does it even emit with a const string? No. So. I don't know, like, what changed in, like, different ARM versions? ARM v7 versus ARM v6. Give me the, give me the differences here. 
VFP, vector floating point, thumb. Arm V6 has the first thumb. Arm V7 has thumb two. So we know we're definitely thumb two. We, we know we're arm V7 because we have thumb two instructions. Um... Hmm. So what? Like, I just, I don't know what else would just not work out of kind of nowhere like that. Unless there's BSS or uninitialized stuff. But it seems to be an issue specifically with that uh, format string, which is really interesting. Um, is it running? Seems a little stuck. We'll help it. This is weird. I don't know why that would happen. Like, let's try a slightly different formatting. Let's format main. This is the address of main itself. I guess we can try hex. Okay, um, so that works. Okay. All right, um, let's try and do it with a U8. So we're going to actually read null, and then we're going to try to display that value as decimal. That's unsafe. Go on. Might not have gotten our allocation. Or we had cache issues. Come on, you fucking printer. Oh my god, come on, dude. Boot! God, this printer is so fucking random. Do do. Yeah, for some reason, decimal just doesn't work. <laughs> but we can do hex, I think. <laughs> I'm pretty sure we can do hex. Waiting for that to reboot. <laughs> That's really weird. If, it, if hex works, but decimal doesn't. Yep. Hmm. So uh, clearly something's 
off there. That's a bit of a problem. Um, I don't really understand why. That's really strange. Hmm. Yeah, I don't, I don't really get that. Um, okay, uh, here we're gonna, we're gonna do some cool stuff now. I don't really know what's going on there, and um, it's really hard to debug this until we get even more stable than than what we're at right now. So we're gonna try. Okay. Okay, and then we'll do uh Hmm. 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 FN receive. Mute. Uh, this is just going to be a buffer. Can you say as mute ref or as ref as mute? As mute. Something that implements as mute slice u8. Um, uh, we'll do debug socket dot map. Uh, and then we'll do x dot receive into buff. Um, cool. One sixty three. Uh, results receive. Okay, uh, I'm just gonna do this. Uh, if let some sock equals debug socket on safe. Uh, just do just due to that mutable. Okay, and then we'll do error. Otherwise, just plumb through that. All right. So this is socket dot receive, and then we should be able to do receive anti mute buff. And put a question mark on it. Mm hmm. And then receive. This receive is the complete receive where it has to match identically. Um, we actually don't want that. If it's not equal to negative one, then some res as you size. Okay, and then this results. Yeah. Okay. Then we can say mutable buff. Let bread is equal to this. Let pointer is equal to ref buff bread. All right. Oh yeah, and uh. All right, check this out. Damn. 
Bam. So let's go. Let's go out of bounds here. Let's just let's just DRF that shit out of bounds for funsies. Um. Info. Seventeen prints doesn't exist yet. Macros have to be in order. Let's put this at the top, and we'll clean up this code as we get things working and more stable. Uh, mute. One seventy eight. Ref. There we go. It's got to reboot. Um, but that should crash, right? That should panic once we receive data, um, which will be really fun. Printing non-hex in the panic. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's fair. We're gonna have to figure that out, aren't we? It really doesn't make sense why that would be happening. No, oh, it's booting. It's trying, at least. We might have to hard reboot it. Um, oh, it's not coming back. All right. There we go. Um... Yeah, I just don't, I don't understand why it would be failing to do uh, decimal formatting. Come on. Yeah, we'll have to figure out that decimal thing if we if we want to get better information out of this. There we go. Bam. Mm, what? Oh, it's just shut down. All right. Weird. Hmm. Entry section. We have that read volatile. We're going to do this. We're just going to make that fail silently. It rebooted. Okay. Um, yeah, we need to figure this out first. Because until we figure this out, we, we don't... We don't know if we can trust... This code, there we go, address. And then it's fucked. Um, clearly it's crashing in some way. Uh, 
We set the address where we're loaded. Everything there seems fine. Like, I don't think there's really, um... We'll do, uh, targets. Whatever this architecture is that we're building. What are we building for? Um... ArmV7A, none. EBI. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know why that would happen. And there's so much code that it's really hard to actually look at to see. Um, unless, unless it's literally like caching stuff again, but I feel like that's unlikely because this memory has probably never been touched since it booted. So start, do all these things, and then we go to format right. Does someone get into hardware hacking? Is there any holy guide for it? Not that I'm aware of. Yeah, you just gotta start somewhere. Hmm. Right prefix. I wonder if it's stack. 52, 48. Fifty-two, seventy-two, one twenty. 72, oh, that's not stack, 48, thoughts on pocket GTFO, I don't really, you know, get into it, I've heard great things. The only things I could really think is that like the object copy binary is not preserving where things should be. Um Yeah, oh, there's a panic strings and stuff. I 
I don't know, dude. I, I don't. I don't know what would be broken. Hmm. It's not like stack alignment or something, is it? No, because we shouldn't be breaking stack alignment. Because we, we call into our stage two uh, pretty cleanly from stage one. We don't use like inline assembly or anything weird. So that's kind of confusing to me. What could be going wrong here? Everything gets copied in before it gets used. It's padded out with zero. So even if we had BSS things, read executable, file size, mem size. So our binary should basically be the same. So all of these are the same, which is great. Uh, if we sum up all of these, so FC, uh, we're going to add 228 to that. We're going to add E0C to that. And we're going to add 4 to that. Uh, 1134, uh, which is 4404, which is exactly what this matches to be. So everything... Yeah, everything in there seems fine. Like the The only thing I could think of would be instructions. Or instruction cache or data cache being an issue. Like DSB ISB being needed. Uh can I do DSB and ISB at low privs? I think I can. Let's do that here. I can't imagine this processor can speculate far enough ahead where this makes literally any difference. Oh my god. Uh, options, no stack. No man. No stack. Are we just that close? Oh my god. <laughs> just, just do an ISB for now. Oh my god. Alright, we'll just get rid of this error check. It's a pretty important error check, but whatever. I don't think it's on. No, it's on. It's just not responding. Okay, rebooting. So this will make sure that basically all of this stuff has been written into cache before we actually jump into this. I don't think that really makes a difference, to be honest. Come on, there we go. Sent. Can we not do DSB ISB? And try it again to see if that's actually the issue. Send data. Mm, yep. 
Let's just try only doing DSB. And we'll get rid of the, 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 these options. Okay. I wonder if DSB and ISB cannot be used. I wonder if uh, the MCR stuff is needed to do them. And I wonder if the Rust code generates any. So I wouldn't be surprised. Reboot, you fuck. Um... DSB. It's available in ARM v7. Mm, I feel like doing a DSB is causing problems. So let's see if our stage two has any DSBs or something. No. All right, let's try to... Hmm. I don't know if ARM v7 R would be any different, but we can try it. R, R. ARM v7 R. That should do the trick, just those need to be changed. I don't think there's a big difference between R and A, to be honest. It's gonna have to reboot there. Um, do 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 do. How backwards compatible is the arm ISA? That just failed, it looks like, on the send side. Sense, okay, same problem. Uh, let's see, target list. All right, let's go down to arm, I don't know, arm v5te. Okay. And this. Arm v5 te, and I don't think this is thumb by default. If it is, obviously that's going to be a problem. Looks like we're going to need a reboot. Um, obj dump d stage two target arm v5 release stage two. Yep, that looks quite arm.
Okay. Okay. Uh... Okay. I can fuck with that. We still don't know what this processor is, right? It could be some ancient ass ARM processor. We know that it does MCRs and uh, stuff like that. But when was MCR added? Um... Check which instructions are diff. Now there is a non-zero chance that we just affected the alignment of instructions and we had an issue, but we've kind of just shuffled some things around. The MCR stuff is, looks like V5T and above. Oh, uh, that's MCR2. MCR is in all versions. Okay, maybe it's, maybe it's been here for a, a hot minute. Can we go older? Is there any reason to not just go to arm v4 t? Oh, is that gonna be thumb only, you think? Arm v4 t, unknown Linux, GNU, EABI. Broken pipe. Probably just needs to reboot. Arm v4 t. Let's actually uh, take a look at the output here. Yep, that is not thumb. So that's arm v4 t. So this is like super, super old. Address five. Okay, I like that. We just go to the oldest fucking version. Uh, I think, I think ARM is forwards compatible, but not necessarily backwards compatible. I don't know to what extent. I don't know if four to five is a big hop. I know three to four was a big hop for ARM, but okay. So now let's try our panicky thing. So let's try this. Let's see if our panic works. Undefined symbol mem set. Uses blicks. No object with architecture supported feature detected. Okay. Okay. We'll go uh, 5TE then. Um. Where's that? Oh, down here. 5TE, I think, is what, what it is. Arm v5. Huh. So, technically, we can pull that in with... Um, Uh Okay. So we can probably go back to RMV four T. RMV four T. Basically, we told it to bring in compiler built-ins, and that compiler built-in should include Rust implementations of the standard C uh, memory library functions. That's a new thing in build standard, relatively new. Bam. Okay, and then I should be able to enter stuff. Hit enter. Look at that, panic, panic. Fuck yeah! 
We had a panic, and the panic occurred at line 197, column 20. So here's where the bu this is where the panic happened, right here. Uh, and range end index 59, out of range of slice of length 32. So there we go. So now we, we have probably relatively arbitrary rust running in this printer now, uh, which is really good. So let's go and um, we're going to just uh, not saying, just saying, we're just going to do that. Um... Arm v4 t, arm v4 t. I wonder if that's gonna fuck up our size. I wonder if we're not gonna fit anymore, due to like maybe having to use a, a riskier set that leads to different instructions. Called it. 444. Oh, is that just that maybe? It's the extra compiler built-ins. Re, 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 and that's a huge difference in size. I'm like really curious what happens. Mm. That looks pretty close. So there's something else going on there. Hash? GNU hash? Is that, is that the relocation model for this specific processor doesn't support it as well? Stage one was working RV7, yeah. Don't mean I'm happy about it. What the fuck are these sections, dude? What the fuck is that trash? Hash elf section. Doesn't, I don't think it's too important. Um, uh, only section, entry section. We'll just do this. We'll just, this is a test. It's a fucking test chat. 288. Okay. So we're a little bit over a quota. All right, we're just gonna go back to what we had. Just because it was working, even though it might not be correct. Okay. Bread. Um, if let sum val is equal to corister from UTF eight pointer. Looks like it's uh, okay here. Um, 
if let okay val equals chorister from uh I guess U32 from Stir Radix Val. Uh, print value at X is X. Mm hmm. Sixteen. Come on, printer. There we go. Booten. Come on. Oh. There we go. Now it's coming up. All right, let's go. Address. Zero, zero, zero. We can just say zero. Um, oh, maybe we can't do that. 10. Okay. Hmm. Um. From Sir Radix. What? Pointer, bread. Oh, it's because of the new line, isn't it? Um, can I, uh, what is it? Strip trim? It's trim. Ah, fuck, I didn't wait for it to boot fully. I wonder if we're not getting that address all the time. That fixed address. But yeah, I do think that was the issue. It's probably white space and other stuff. So now we can have white space and new lines and all that sort of shit. Should be fine.
Look at that. Fucking solid, dude. Can we get it to crash? Probably not. Yeah, it just addresses a couple times because it buffers a few things. That's fine. That's fine. Address. All right. 1363AC. Oh, yeah. One. Is this? Oh, that's the that's the flash. Here, we'll look at this. This right here, that address. F O B five O six O O. Oh yeah, oh yeah. We can do whatever we want. And then of course we can crash the printer if we want. Boop, boop. Gone. Um, let's see. How complex is the GDB remote protocol? How hard would it be to add my own GDB stub to this? Toro Baka, thank you so much for the 10 months. Fuck yeah. I mean, let's be honest. You can't you can't get much better than this. This is this is high quality shit. Look at that, dude. <laughs> Relatively simple. ASCII framing format with a checksum and a handful of commands to peek and poke memory and registers. What if can you just not provide like register peek and pokes? I mean, obviously, I can add them. Let's, uh, let's see. Um, GDB target remote one, two, three, four, NCL one, two, three, four, K okay, one, two, three, nine. Hmm. Okay, what do you have to respond with? So, dollar sign, packet data, and then there's a, that's the checksum? Is that literally a sum of bytes? For any command not supported by the stub, an empty response, dollar pound zero zero should be returned. So that's plus. It has example stubs in the source tree. Yeah, it sounds like a lot of work. When either the host or target machine receives a packet, the first response expected is to is an acknowledgement, either plus indicating the package was received correctly or minus to request retransmission. Must reply empty, queue supported. So that says queue supported, all these things. Notification packets. Oh wow, they have a lot of packets. Hmm. No arm, yeah. 
Yeah, this is this is really complex. Um, yeah, I feel like I feel like you don't need to support all of this to get this to work. Right? So what the fuck is the what are these pluses? Dollar packet data and then a checksum here. XML registers, key supported. I think it just repeated that. So G, return the value, set the value, resume, continue, step, kill, okay? So, here's what I imagine I can do. Boom. Dollar, pound, zero, zero. And it acknowledged that, and it wants me to do something. Timeout and queue supported response. I guess it wants an ACK plus. You want some pluses? Dollar pounds here zero. Must reply empty. Okay, okay. Dollar pounds here zero. Okay, HG0. All right. All right. HG. H. Oh my God, dude, this documentation blows! <sighs> H. It's really hard to do a find and fucking search for a, for a single letter. HG0. So what's the H? Is is just is it just the G that matters? Is G the thing that matters? Um Does the rust have everything GDP stub? Yeah. Examples. Process being restarted. Yeah. Packet acknowledgments. When either the host or the target machine receives a packet, the first response expected is either a plus or a minus. Okay. 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 So I'm like, okay, I got, I got you. I got you. I processed that. It's like, yo, resend your shit. Okay, must reply empty. Uh, I got you, I, I got you, dude. Mm-hmm, what else you got for me? All right, all right. Uh, okay. Um. Then HG0, H selects the thread. How, uh, how does H select the thread? G reads register, zero is the thread ID. Oh, all packets? Thank fuck. H.
set thread for subsequent operations and then an operation oh that's nice it's nice R rather than have like a set thread operation you have a a set thread and do operation operation nice um reply okay for success okay do i do i do like dollar sign okay on that uh, acknowledged zero zero replied empty there's your reply mm-hmm okay HD zero all right uh, so okay I guess I have to do dollar okay and then the the hash. Supposed to dump the registers in a hex string as a response. Yeah. Status. A. Uh the cutie status. general query describe fully in general query okay and then t status is a trace point packet t status okay and then t running or t not run or t stop all right. Um. Mm. Mm. Uh, sock stream. I start bind. All right, something like that. Nice, fucking, so good at this. All right, um, GDB stub. Okay. QNV packets are weird. Don't think you need to support them. Yeah. So here's what we're gonna do. Um, well, true, uh, buff is C dot receive. I don't know. That's probably big enough, right? Print buff. Mm. Beautiful. Okay. And then what it what is the hash? Then on the payload packets the checksum I mean. Uh computed as modulo sum between the leading dollar sign and trailing pound. Okay. Um So we can do buff dot split and dollar sign two, right? Mm, piece of shit. Um, S dot set sock opt or maybe reuse adder. Can I just do it directly? Python use adder. I think it's set sock opt. Yeah. So reuse adder and then one. Hmm. Split n. Uh, 
Oh, it's just split and then you set an N, I'm guessing. Max split, yeah. Okay, split by B. All right, so we got the plus, and I got the Q supported and all of this shit. All right, so we have command is equal blah, command is equal to this. Uh, command uh, checksum is equal to buff dot R split B pound max split is two something like that that's probably ballpark what i want right yeah that, that looks really good uh print command print check some beautiful oh oh that's good all right and then uh four bytes in command uh, checksum is zero, bytes plus equals, or checksum plus equals bytes. Mm-hmm. And we can do this. Uh, checksum plus bytes and OXFF. Print. That's the C checksum. That's the computed checksum. Mm-hmm. All right, there we go. Um, what? B nine six A. Okay. Um, between the leading dollar sign. Oh, uh, we need to split on that. What? Oh, this is command. Six A and six A. Okay, we did it! Yay! Assert checksum is equal to hex C checksum. You son of a bitch. Hmm. It's easier this way. Okay, sweet. Um And then the command is an optional two digit sequence ID. Nice. So then it's the, the, um, command. Command payload is equal to command dot split on the, I guess, colon max split two. I don't need to say max split. Um, okay, command and payload. And a B. Okay, and then we can say if command is equal to something we support, uh, pass, otherwise we don't know what it is, and we'll do command 
uh, I guess we'll do C dot send um, plus. Do we do we acknowledge it and then and then do that? We basically say like, "Yep, we got it," and then we don't know what the fuck you're talking about, though. BT dubs. Um, they don't all have colons. Son of a bitch. You need to match on the first character. Okay. Then we got a straight plus. I guess that's acknowledging, okay, so if buff is equal to plus, continue. I'm guessing we don't, they're acknowledging us not knowing what the fuck to do with that. They're acknowledging our empty. Then we're going to HG. B. Nice. That's not too bad. Uh, okay. <laughs> we did it. <laughs> we did it. Must reply empty, HG0, QT status, and then a, a straight up question mark. Okay. Um and it doesn't support figuring that out automatically. Okay, cool. So let's uh let's tell it a uh, Invalid remote reply. Can you show your cargo tomble for what? Um, valid remote reply. See the dependencies for for what? <laughs> I have I have no dependencies. No dependencies. Are you using standard socket? No. Um. Red info. QL that. Extended mode. What do I have to actually respond to here? General query packets. I just want to know what the fucking bare minimum I need for this to pop into a shell where I can hit X. Q attached. Um. G 
General query packets queue attached. Return an indication of whether the remote server attached to an existing process or created a new one. Okay. L if command is equal to B. Eh. Eh. I guess this is just Q attached. Mm hmm. C.send. Uh, I don't know if we have to acknowledge everything like this, but whatever. And then uh, attached to an existing process. Now, in theory, we probably need to use, you know, checksums and stuff and things. Hey. And then minus. It got mad at us. Okay. So we can do um, def send uh, message. And then we can just do message. And then we'll do uh, compute the checksum on this. And then we'll do. Uh, I guess we can take the socket and then we can do s dot send mm, dollar sign plus message plus uh, format this I'm guessing o uh, two x uh, c check some mm? okay. Send message. Yeah, let's try this. Okay. Oh, we need a uh, client. Stir the bytes. It, can you do FB or is it BF? BF? No, bytes. Mm, my fucking god, dude. Oh, it's because that. Sorry, my bad. Can you do FB or BF? Hmm. Uh, what is it? Encode? <sighs> What's the correct fucking way to do that? <sighs> God, I hate this fucking absolute shit language. Um, six A in message. Holy shit. Dude, I, I love this language, dude. I love how you can just, like, use random variables and stuff, and scoping just doesn't really mean anything. It's just kind of all made up. Um... Okay. I love when I have to kill things so I can get access to my terminal again. That's nice. Uh, L if command is equal to uh, Q attached, then C dot send. We got you. We ack, and then we're gonna send a um, 
We're gonna send a one. You attached to an existing process. Target remote. Hmm. It act that. Did I typo it? B. Jesus. Fuck. Fuck this language, dude. Sending dollar one thirty one. Okay, so that's not what it wanted a response to. <laughs> Night. Good to see you, RWX Rob. Thank you for the raid. Hell yeah. Might need to deliver a signal via the stub to make it break into a shell. Hmm. Let's see. Um, continue, read registers, signal, and then single step. V stopped. Thoughts? We're just gonna we're just gonna send that out of the blue. Just out of fucking nowhere, we're gonna blast one of those in there. Hmm. Hmm. Command T. Find out if a thread is alive. Mm, but that is sent to us. To be honest, I think pretty much everything is sent to us. Um, unless it's this T status. But I don't think so. That's that's the Q the query packet. That's a trace point packet. Ask if there is a trace experiment running right now, and there's not. Valid remote reply. Stop reply packets. Program receives signal number AA. It's equivalent to a T with no NR pairs. Okay, okay, so we'll just say, uh, uh, we got a signal number 14. <laughs> God damn it, dude. Mm. Mm.
Hmm. I guess I actually have to respond to that first. Can I be a mod? Uh, that's unfortunately not really how that works. I don't know why anyone would want to be a mod. It's a fucking terrible role. It's literally a, a job with no reward. Um... There are no resumed threads left in the target. Let's send an N. Let's just send an N. No threads left. <sighs> yeah, that's nice. The thread exited. So basically, it's just it just invalid remote reply. Regardless of if I reply or not, I see, I see, like it, it made it sound like if you don't know what something is, you use the empty response. If for any command not supported by the stub, you just, you give it the empty response and that, and that's what we do. We give it the empty response. I guess, are we not supposed to act things? If, do, if we empty response, are we not supposed to act them? Maybe? Dude, the GDB GNU documentation is so fucking bad. <laughs> so fucking stupid. Yep, I definitely have to acknowledge those. Okay, we're just always gonna acknowledge that shit. Support G and C. You get the queries and you reply that you don't support reading registers or continuing. You are you talking about are you talking about QC? Return the current thread ID. HC. Uh, H sets the thread. And then C is continue at address. And then minus one, I'm guessing is just like whatever fucking thread. Thread ID syntax. Negative one for all threads. Okay, so continue all threads. Okay. Um, and we'll just say C B. Okay. We'll just say we'll say okay. Hmm. Sending okay, and then we get an acknowledge, and then we get a QC. Return the current thread ID. Do I need to respond to that?
There's the thread ID. God, it felt like that was going to do something. SO5 to the C? But it... But it, it literally tells me to reply OK. <laughs> All right, whatever. Uh, SO5. Nope. Capital S? That makes sense. I, I agree with you there. Nope. Nope. I love how they just describe the, the like messages, but don't describe the actual state machine at all. SO5. Unless you're not supposed to have a space. Hmm. HG zero. H. G, this is to get the thread, right? Or this is to get the register state. Read general registers. Oh, no space. Oh, is that is 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 that why is that why all of the things in their protocol say to uh, have a space there? Is that just is that just for fun? You know, just putting the space in there just for funsies. Mm, no. I like the warning message though. It's really nice. Invalid remote reply. And then, and then, yeah. Okay, and then it just hangs. Ah, oh, really nice. Really nice. Hmm. <sighs> What's QL? Obtain thread information from the RTOS. Okay. Create thread info, create that. Hmm. Hmm. SO5 to question as well. This Hmm 
Um. Okay, that's progress. That's progress, chat. It wants registers. It broke to a shell. I mean, it didn't. I mean, we have G here. So that G. Give it G in the right format. That looks like the right format. That looks good to me. Good. Nah, this looks fantastic. This looks perfect. This looks fine. Um, sending me an empty. Sending that. Acknowledge. Got a P8. Sending that we don't know what the fuck that is. Uh, then we got a plus. Acknowledging. We got an empty. I guess we can say if buff is equal to empty or this. Okay, okay, okay. Chillax, dude. Chillax, dude. Um. G. XX, each byte of registered data is described with two hex digits. The size of each register in their position in the G packet is determined by the GDB internal GDB arc functions and deprecated register raw size and GDB arc register name. Cool. Hmm. What's P? Read the value of a register N. Oh, um, what if we don't respond to that? Let's just see. G. Okay, so it really wants a G. So we'll give it some G. And then it wants a P, so it wants a P8. Uh, I'm guessing that's PC. Send message C B one two three four five six seven eight. There you go. There's PC for you, right there. Boom, boom, easy, easy, leet leet. Fucking easy shit I've done in my fucking life. Are you, are you seriously fucking telling me that a, a fucking ASCII string is not treated as native Indian? <laughs> what fucking ridiculous protocol is that? Who, who Indian swaps... ASCII printable hex strings. Who the fuck does that? M. Who the fuck does that? <laughs> LF command is equal to M. Mm. I'm guessing M stands for M spec memory. Mm. Read adder comma length. Well, that's actually really easy. Um, adder length is equal to um, command dot split uh, one colon split comma print adder length.
Ah, uh, fuck it. If command zero is B M. Um, move cam top right. It's just, yeah, we're just going to scroll a bit here. Um, command. Really? Command is that, and then I check if it's M. The fuck, dude? Command, is command zero not M? <sighs> this fucking language. And you, you can't do characters like this, right? Mm. God, this language fucking sucks, dude. I guess I have to say int m something like that. How the fuck do I do that in Python? How the fuck do you do that? Can you not can you not do that? Do you have to struct unpack it? We did it! We broke GDB. Um, split. Okay, and then we have an address. So what? What? What's going on? What's going on with this? Why does it byte swap when we send it to it, but it? doesn't byte swap it when it sends it to us. Like, what kind of fucked ass protocol is that? We send it leet leet, and it's like, oh, you mean 3713, 3713? Oh yeah, I would like to read that, by the way. Oh, sure, uh, could you read 37133? What the fuck consistency is that? <laughs> oh my god, dude. <laughs> It's a string! Why are you doing Indian swaps? P. The register's value. Um. The bytes are, um, they're transmitted in target byte order. Wait, so you send these in target byte order? That's so stupid! What, and then, and then when you read memory, it's in, uh, the address? Is just the address? So, so you send this in byte order, but then this address is just a straight up address. Cool. Okay. Address hex adder 16. Uh, sorry, int adder 16. Uh, length is int adder 10. It's implied. Sorry, uh, length. And then we can do a mm, response is blah. Uh, for blah in range length, adder uh, rest plus equals. Uh, okay. Send message C response. Uh, 
Um. Oh. I guess that is in hex. Hey! Hey! Um, PF. Okay, if you if you ask for any register, it's leap. Ah? Uh? Ah? Uh? Ah? Uh? That looks respectable. Oh, can we just send an empty to this? No, it gets mad when we do that, doesn't it? What if we send an error with an error no of one? Let's do that. Okay. Mm-hmm. You son of a bitch. All right, we're just gonna send it one register because it seems to deal with that okay. Yeah, so EAX is clearly that. Um, all registers, yep. Bunch of elites. Some weird stuff going on in there. I hate to say it, but I uh, this looks like uh <laughs> this looks like uninitialized uh data <laughs> that it's returning back here. <laughs> um like that looks like an address. <laughs> it looks like random shit on the stack. <laughs> it definitely looks like random shit on the stack. Um, all right. All right, so all that matters is that we can set arc arm. And we can hopefully do this. IR, X10, X, I, P, C, right? And we should be able to read instructions and um, that sort of stuff. That's not too bad, right? That's that's not terrible. Um, this wasn't this wasn't miserable. This wasn't amazing. It wasn't miserable. Um, so yeah, I think we can implement this pretty quickly, right? Thoughts, chat. Um, Q attached. Did did we need to respond to Q attached? I think we we probably didn't. K 
okay, we don't need that. We need G, we need that to tell it it stopped. We need this to f fill in registers, we need this for memory, and then we need this for, for when we, you know, everything else. Okay. Um... Okay, so, we're just gonna read commands. Uh, let command, I guess we can grab this. Oh, we have receive. Okay, uh, receive buff, I don't know, probably 128 is enough there for the buffer. So we make a buffer, we receive that buffer, we set a pointer, we then convert it to a string, and then um, here we can say if, Hmm. Hmm. Message is equal to this. If message is error, continue. Um, eh, we can just do this, to be honest. We don't really give a shit, right? Um, okay, or, uh, map error, because that question mark's not going to work, right? Yeah. Uh, so we'll do map error, and we'll just turn the error into one of those. Okay. Mm, arm. All right, so what we need to do is bind, uh, I guess... Tar remotes one two three five. Oh my god, dude! That printer fucking making printer noises fucking scared the shit out of me. God damn it! <laughs> uh, all right, so we'll do one nine two zero one six eight dot one dot one fifty nine. Okay, and then we'll connect into that. We'll receive a buffer. We'll get the number of bytes there. I guess here we can just say uh, buff bread. So uh, read the GDB message. And then this is uh, convert the message to a string. Um, and now that we're dealing with strings, we can say, uh, let's, just, let's just print these for now. Well, you can't really do that. Um, so I guess if message is equal to plus, continue. Okay. And then, um, I don't know. I'm okay with this for now. I think this will get us everything we need. Dollar sign. Yeah, we kind of need starts with if we do this, then. Yeah, we kind of need to parse it. Uh, if message zero. Uh, if this is equal to a dollar sign. Else if message zero to one is a plus hmm. if message is equal to just plus continue otherwise if the message starts with a dollar sign otherwise c dot send uh, this is going to be um send hmm. print uh, plus. So if it's a plus, we just continue. Otherwise, uh, if it starts with a dollar sign, um, I guess we just want to split at that, don't we? Yeah. We're gonna do kind of the same logic we have over here. Uh, let's mute spool. Uh, let spool 
is equal to um hmm. Command is equal to message dot split n uh, two by dollar dot nth one uh, k dot split n two r split n two by pound dot next. Um, and then if let some command this, is that correct? Split at that, then split at the pound. Holy shit, did we get that? Um, so we split at the dollar, so we get the thing after the dollar and before the pound. So the thing after the first dollar and before the last pound, right? And that's effectively what we do here. We don't care about the, the actual checksum. And then if this is good, then we'll do a uh, print plus, so we'll send a plus. And then we'll match this command. And we'll say if it is a question mark, then we will do a print S05. If it is a G, then we'll do a print of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. If it is a, a P, then we'll do a print Oh, and we can't use print here. We actually have to do the correct send message thing. So we'll do like um, FN. <sighs> How do I want to do that actually? Hmm. Um, FN send GDB. This is going to take a reference uh, to the socket. There's a socket reference. And then we're going to take a message, which is something as uh, impl as ref slice bytes uh, this returns the results which is basically that and then we'll do let message this message as ref let checksum is equal to message dot iter dot fold o u eight accumulator and x accumulator plus x, uh, accumulator dot wrapping add x and then we just print a dollar sign a message actually we're going to just keep that as a string uh and then a pound and then a o2x and check some. Send GDB. Let socket is debug socket as ref unwrap. Okay, send socket. Send GDB socket. Send GDB socket. <laughs> it's for a P. Three seven one three three seven one three. 
Um, and then for an M, send GDB socket. Uh, we don't handle M yet. Um, and then for everything else, we send GDB sockets empty. So in theory, we should be able to connect to this. So always acknowledge, and then after acknowledgement, then we send these things. Um, the only thing is we don't actually check the check some of the inbound things, and then uh, this is discard axe. Um, okay, 218, ref that. Uh, semis, 187 is issues. As bytes dot iter dot fold. Two twenty four loop mismatch types one eighty eight. Uh, yep, that makes sense. Ref that expected two twenty four. Expected that you got a result. So want me to semi that. On safe on this. Um, oh, that connects out. Shit. Um, can you do server based GDB? It'd be amazing if you could listen GDB. It would make little sense, but that would be really nice if you could. Um, mm, I don't think there's a way. I don't think there's a way. Um, fuck. I think I... This is like uh, bind uh, to an IP and ports. So make a TCP socket. Cool. That's easy. Um, and then create the address. This is what we're going to bind. Okay. That's all good. And then we're going to do a bind here. This is going to be bind. Um, let's go find that. Here we go. Bind. Bam. Okay. So this is bind. Um, 
And then bind is a sock FD, a sock editor in, and a sock line. Oh, it's, I guess it's the exact same thing as uh, connect in terms of those arguments. Um, and then I guess it's the same error checking. Uh, check for success. Socket is equal to this. Uh, so this is create the socket. So if it's not equal to negative one, then uh, self socket, okay, or, and then that should hopefully wrap that up. And then okay, socket. All right, cool. Um, so then we have to uh, listen and all of those so fun things. So we'll look for uh, listen. Okay, looks good. Looks like you found listen here. B08. Okay. HKVA, thank you so much for the Twitch Prime. Two months of support. Fuck yeah. Hell yeah. Hope you're enjoying the content today. Sock FD, and then we have a backlog, which is an I32. Let's set that to five. And now this is going to be socket.0.0, I think. So that's going to listen. Um. If res is equal to negative one, return error. To be honest, we can do that for this stage too. We don't need to make the socket yet. We can say self socket, and then we can just do socket.0 and just use the file. Okay, so if that's negative one, then return error. And then finally, we need to do an accept. Um, okay. We have accept here. Bink, 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 bink. Uh, and accept is going to be, uh, this is a mute sock adder in, uh, mutable reference to a U size, and then flags. No, there's no flags. Um, just the three args. Okay, so we pass in the socket, we pass in a mutable reference to, uh, basically an address that we can clobber. So we'll just do this, um, mute adder. And then uh, let adder len is equal to uh, size of val adder. And then this will be a mutable reference to adder len. Okay, and then if that is equal to negative one, then we will return error. Um, otherwise, Clients is equal to uh, thank you for the hundred biddies PZ thirteen sixty nine. Uh, clients is going to be equal to a file res. Right, and we have to unsafe this. So this is now wrap up the uh, newly received uh, file descriptor for the clients in our uh, file wrapper. Okay. Um, we'll just say ex uh, bind and accept, and accept the first connection. Okay. 
self and self. I guess honestly, just just the uh, and return the socket to the uh, client. So we're gonna do self client here, actually, right? Got a connection. I doubt this is gonna work first try, but uh, let's uh, NC 192.168.1159, uh, 1235. So we're gonna try to connect into this. Um, and then we'll just do a print here. Loop, print, hi. This is gonna see if we can connect in. Bam. Bam. Fucking god damn it, we're fucking good. Holy shit. <laughs> um created sockets. Then we do that. And then we wrap that up in a file descriptor such that that will get dropped. Um, we're doing it, chat. First fucking try. Uh, first try server. Six that one fifty nine. Uh, one two three five, and then receive GDB messages. Process it. Discard axe. Split and get the command. Broken pipe. Okay, it's rebooting. Oh yeah, and print worked. Yeah, we literally bind and accept. And then the debug socket is to that, and we can use print and whatever. Receive. We can actually do a socket dot receive. Sending womp womp. What do you think about Win 10 and Whistle for Devon hacking work? It's the same as pretty much any other OS. They're all pretty much the same. Whistle's really nice, but it's just like when you have VMs and stuff, there's just really not. Not a huge problem, regardless of what you use. Whistle 2 greater than Whistle. Yeah, that's for damn sure. Sent. Connected. Invalid remote reply. Okay. Okay. Receive that. Convert the message to a string. Ah, do we need to make a buffered reader for this fucking thing, dude? We're gonna have to make a buffered reader, aren't we going to? Probably. Um. If message is plus, continue. Do I just receive like one byte at a time until I get a pound and two characters? So you play games in VM? I don't. 
play him on play him in line. Hmm. Split and that nth one. That should be the same as this. Then we get the command split r split n two next. We send a plus, and then we mux off of this question g p m. The m doesn't matter yet. For everything else, we send an empty. And then we want to send a dollar message. Dollar message pound and a checksum. Hmm. Do I need to buffer these and send them in like one packet request? Right, I feel like this should work, right? Hmm. The fuck is, uh, am I literally going to have to fucking, I swear to God, if I, if I'm going to have to go in here and buffer these packets, I'm going to be pissed. Come on, you piece of shit. I don't want to write that code. Okay, send that, receive a plus. Then we receive, okay, so we receive the plus, we receive, we don't know what the fuck to do with that. We get the must reply empty, we an ack, send this, we get a uh, mercury, we ax and we don't know what to do with it. Cutie status, we get a plus, don't know what to do with it. We got a question. We get a plus, that's a problem. Um, okay, it is working. Um, it, it's working to some extent, but something's wrong with this command. So send to, now maybe it's getting fucked on this side when I receive it. 
But I feel like this should do what I think it does, right? Uh... Okay. Let message is equal to, well, what's one that we know we don't process? And basically, if this, if this works correctly, then we know that we need to basically read, uh, buffer it slowly. Please, please have a fucking mistake. 3F, R split N, oh, okay. You have to go nth, because I guess you're going the other way. There's the question mark. All right, chat, time to get excited. Gotta let it reboot. Sometimes I don't trust receive with like fins and stuff. Like technically, um, or not fins, pushes. So technically we should get them in the size that they get pushed on, but sometimes it's just, you know, sometimes it's a little more sauce than that. Okay, it looks like that didn't work. That's fine. Sometimes they're just not gonna get the right address or caches are gonna get fucked. So, I don't think I need to strace it because I think it's just gonna work. Pretty confident about that. It's just gonna fucking work. Not worried about it. Hundred percent. It, it's just it's just gonna work right out of the box. Right out of the fucking box. Mm. Mm. Damn it, dude. Oh, baby. Oh, whoa, whoa! Obviously, that's not gonna work. Woo! Woo! All right, let's kill that. Let's make sure that dies. Adder, len, say nth, nth, zero and one. We could technically make one thing and actually consume off of it by doing next, but whatever. Uh, let adder is equal to u32 from stir radix adder, 16. And len from len. So we get the address, we get the length, and then we have to basically construct the response. Uh, okay. So we'll do a we'll do a print. We're gonna start off by printing a dollar dollar sign, and then we're gonna go for adder in adder dot dot adder plus len. Um, then we can do uh, let val is equal to uh, 
core pointer read volatile of adder as const u8 on save. Um, and then print o2x val. Um, let checksum is equal to, um, So we need to compute this fucking checksum. Mm. Is there a way in Ross to go from... I want to go from a U8 to two bytes. Mm. Do I have to write that myself? I think I'm going to have to write that myself, aren't I? Binary lower hex, impl lower hex for U8. That goes to format. Hmm. Is there a good way for me to do this? I don't think there is. Um. Welp. I'm not happy about it. Um. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, A, B, C, D, E, F. Okay. Um, so we can print that value, and then we can do um, let mute checksum is equal to zero, U8. Uh, checksum is equal to checksum dot wrapping add um hexlut val and oxf val shift 4 and f which one gets printed first that one the top one not that it matters cuz it's uh it's just summing anyways so I think that's going to compute the checksum correctly. We should be able to then print uh, O2x. Thoughts? Is that right? Let's grab that hex lot. Mm, I think I have to put some friends in there, don't I? 
foreign, 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 and then 28. Okay, so let's try it in our Python, because we know our Python stuff is right. Let's just do a uh, send message zero this. Let's just see what it says. Um... In the stir. Mm. What? S dot send. Oh, sending. Twenty eight. Well, we got twenty eight. Okay, I think it works. We'll just cast that to a U size. Can I put semicolons here? I don't know if I can. No. How do I have that discard the return value? I mean, I can just do this, but I don't like it. Oh, geez, we're ready to go. I was probably too slow on that. That split address length for adder, adder plus len. Oh, shit. I think that's right. E59FFO18. Yes, sir. Um, and what we can do is set arc arm. Um, 18 FO9 FE5, 18 FO9 FE5, yeah, uh, it should be an LDR PC, uh, set Indian little, how do I, how do I get that, how do I, what? That's not right. Um, eighteen FO nine F E five. What the fuck? Um, Hmm. Uh, am I am I running the wrong architecture here? What are the architectures? Uh, 
back. Huh. Is it disassembling his thumb? Let's look at this function. Yes. That is th that is the code, dude. Fucking sick. Um Oh, that's going to be, it's going to be controlled by the CPSR. Hey! Fuck yeah. All right. <laughs> That's pretty fucking cool. What's cool is the printer is running right now. It's like doing stuff. Um, <laughs> like, like memory is definitely changing and, and whatever. So we should be able to see that that is the same. Isn't that fucking cool? 50. Look at that. Look at that. We have a f we fucking have GDB. <laughs> it's pretty fucking cool, dude. Pretty fucking cool. Nice, dude. Not bad. Not bad to be honest. Fucking rust. How big is our payload here? 22k? Yeah, we brought in a lot of formatting stuff, so that makes sense. Anyways, I'm gonna call it there. I'm actually really happy with that. I, I think that's a pretty good uh, result there. So, uh, cheers. Thanks everyone for stopping by. Hope you had some fun. But that was, uh, that was a fucking blast. I think that, uh, that turned out pretty good there. So, hell yeah. Thank you for the learn. Absolutely. See y'all another time. Let me see if there's someone good to raid. Um. Let's see. Science and technology. Oh, Strager streaming. Hell yeah. Send you over there. Um. All right, see y'all later.